Okay. Everything is on. I'd like to call the meeting to order at 6.30. Any additions? Yes. Uh, we need to discuss what, if any, obligation the town has to pick up flood debris. Yep. Um, in addition, uh, Rosie asked me to include that Lindy Johnson has resigned as Justice of the Peace, so we can, I can read yeah. that to you later. Yeah, that was the addition I had. I was talking about the mm -hmm. flood debris. Mm -hmm. Okay. With that in, did you have something? I do. If we could just maybe have a brief conversation about clarification of when we need to, when it's necessary to call a meeting. Sure. And this isn't an addition, but just a preview under other business. I got a report from a townsperson on CV fiber connection costs that I'll just share with you and, and see if you guys know anything more than what I got in this email. Okay. Anything else? <coughs> no? Uh, review of minutes June 19th and also July 14th. So I, I attended the June 19th meeting. I made some comments. I'm not in the record of being at the meeting on the 19th. I'm sorry about that. Scott, were you in person or remote? That I was in the flesh. Is that me in person? Uh, yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah. No apologies necessary. Yeah, I don't see. Are you talking about the 19th? You said? Yeah, the 19th. I was, I was yeah. Saying. I made some motions too. Remember, I asked if you needed, if you were um, nervous about being alone up there and I would sit next <laughs> to you. Remember that? Sure. I was here. <laughs> you said you would be okay because Carl wasn't here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is that all that was at that meeting? Was just the three of us? And where is it? Where's the list? The June 19th? Ten minutes. That's four people on the four. select board. So Everybody was there. Was on, oh, you were there. Yeah, I was there. So yeah, it was, there was the three of us. You were there. there. Yeah. 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 You doubt? You doubting me? Hmm? You doubting me? No. Of okay. course not. No, I'm just looking at the list of people that were at the meeting. And I okay. realized the only one that was actually absent was Carl. Yeah. So we should add that in. It wasn't a slight. I don't believe no. I, I, it was, you know, it was a slight, but it wasn't purposeful. Okay, we can move on. We can move on. I'll make the motion to accept the minutes. Oh, wow. And then you can always have the we discussion. Can have have, you certainly have the discussion. We have move things along. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Now, do we have further discussion about the minutes? <coughs> You're the second. Oh, yes. Yeah. Nobody has any corrections or comments on the on the multi-page document that you're looking at. No. no? Okay. Comprehensive as usual. Yes, very thorough. And the problem is that your name wasn't mentioned enough. Uh, we can change that. If we Did you want to do that? I no, mean, seriously. No, no. This this is the accurate. This is the public record. Yeah. Yeah, but you made some motions. You said. That's why. Oh, you've got it right here, right? Yeah. Your your motions are attributed to you. Exactly. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Guys have it. They appear to have it. They do have it. Okay. That's June 19th. Let's look at July 14th. Uh, ta -da, ta -da. July 14th. Meeting, right? That's correct. Yeah. That's why the minutes are short. That was a storm meeting. Yeah. One page. I'll make the motion to accept the minutes. Pedro, you step up here. Oh, I'll second that. Okay. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Any further discussion about the minutes from July 14th? No? 
All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. That takes care of the minutes. Public mm -hmm. comment. I see some people here that could be public. Did you want to say something under public comment or are you here for a specific agenda item? Okay, is that is in here somewhere? Oh yeah, that's our next item. So and on the screen there, oh that's Larry Gilbert. You're gonna say something under public comment or are you just here for the county road? Okay. Okay, let's move on to discussion on county road event. And this lady's raise her hand. Brooks, Veronica, I live on the county road. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. We, the residents of County Road, had to present valued facts against the road closure, yet the select board only gave one point for the road closure to benefit the community, including Mr. Gilbert. We, the residents, should not have to present valued points when we clearly do not want our road to be closed for bicycles, runners, or walkers. We have them during the day already. Now, questions to select board members. Have you not been selected by residents to represent them and to wish and, and to act on their behalf and respect their wishes? Why is the select board going against its residents who are impacted the most? And we clearly said with majority numbers, no, we don't want it closed. Do any of the select board members reside, travel daily on our roads? Mr. Gilbert, you said all trash would be picked up. It was not picked up. I was home and I was watching. Do you have permission to step on people's properties? Who is held responsible if one of your volunteers slips, falls on private owned properties? I do not give such permission to step on my property. Mr. Gilbert, you are promoting more bicycles to use our road by a so-called road prize as shown on the Country Road Street Survey, at our expense and inconvenience, who is the game? You are. Selling bikes and Morse Farm was mentioned as well, including in the Times Argus, they cannot be blocked because they will lose money. But it's okay for us to be blocked. Also, it came to my attention that one select board member teaches bike safety. Is this correct? Do you want to answer? Do you, uh, no. you want us to answer the questions as you present yes. them? Uh, okay, so do, do, do one of us teach bike safety? I'm uh, certified to teach bicycle safety for the League of American Bicyclists. So there is no agenda there, okay. It was stated 70 plus bicycles were on the road July 9. We saw about, eh, top end, 20 and maybe three children. Two were going up the hill, unsupervised and one car came down. One hour from 11 to 12 o'clock, nobody was on the road. Two residents I know drove the road, both of them were given dirty looks, and one of the residents was given even the finger. If the select board is not willing and goes against its residents' wishes, maybe it's time to step down or be reelected by somebody else. We, the impacted residents, say again, no, to our road closure, will our voices be heard today? If not, I propose that select board bring it before the East Montpelier voters to officially vote on it. No one outside East Montpelier should dictate or demand to use our road. This is a matter for the people of East Montpelier. Thank you. Anybody have some questions for the residents? <clears throat> I do. Okay. Um, I'd just be curious to um, ask. Um, you said that between 10 and 11 that you saw only three children? No, there was nobody on the road between okay. 11 and 12 o'clock. Before that, I saw three children, two parents were going up the hill, and the two children were way behind. Maybe unsupervised. And were, were you at the Barnes Road end? I'm, just trying to I'm living on the on the county road. Right. Can you can you go up the hill. It's like hook roads on the Uh huh. I, I'm just curious because I was at the Temple at, at the juncture between Templeton and County. It was going up the hill where the forest starts, 
and uh -huh. the parents were way out of sight, they were not even to be seen. And the children were going in the middle and then going up in the middle of the road and the car came down. The slope doing that. And I was curious, do you think it would be more fair to pose this question to all residents of East Montpelier or just people that live on County Road? We are the ones who are getting affected the most. So do you think it would this be? this road closure. This is affecting everybody on this road. So do you think the vote should be put to people that, residents of County Road, instead of all of East Montpelier, that might be more fair because perhaps other residents of East Montpelier might want to vote to use County Road. What do you think? It's not, it's not their backyard, so they don't It's know. our front yard and we're being impacted. I don't even dare go, and go out on the road anymore because with the children all over the place, it's not safe. I'm not taking that chance. Okay, I got a question. Um, you say we, the uh, residents of East Montclair, how many people are you representing? On our road, a couple. Okay, because I counted 44 houses between Templeton Road and Barnes Road, both sides of the road. There's 44 households on that stretch of road. So, so four, at least four say no, and one okay. at least couldn't be here tonight because she's not, she's just out of Okay, so you've got four people. That's just in our immediate area. Okay, but. You also have powder horn blind too. It shouldn't be forgotten in this case. Yeah, I didn't count powder horn, horn blind. I just counted houses on each side of the road. And if people on powder County horn blind can't exit without going on. Okay, the but I'm just saying, are you representing the 44 households on that stretch of road, or are you representing the four people? As of right now, the people who live near us. If, okay. If it continues, we would have to take door to door and go get more and more. If this is going to be an ongoing thing, it has to. Well, I just wondered who you represent. Well, I, just, wonder who you represent. Well, just, I mean, before it was. You said we, the residents, that means more than yourself. Right. right. And the problem is, a lot of people are kind of like, nothing's going to happen, nothing's going to change, you're going to do this anyways. They're just kind of fed up with you and trying to. Because you didn't listen the first time when you wrote in. Okay. So what, what's the difference here? I just wondered what you're, who you represent. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, you talked about uh, you're the ones who uh, are experiencing the impact of this. Could you describe the impact, please? Uh, we're at the house, and people are walking in the road, so that like, they said two people gave dirty looks and one gave the finger. We didn't persuade. We didn't the present that, but some of the residents okay. had told us about this. So the, the impact on you guys directly? What was that? Uh, down at the end of the road, we have people in the, in the road, and if we go out there, they're kind of like, you shouldn't be here, that type of thing. And it just makes it very uncomfortable for us to interact with our community members where we're being chastised because we're not doing what they want. Did, did you go out there in the car? I, I, I won't go out there now. I will not go out there again. I will not drive in that road. I, I, am, I am going to stay in my house. I'm going to stay away from these people because they are, they are very, very, very unpleasant to be around. They go out there and they're, just like, they're not following what they want. What do they want you to do? Get out of the way. Don't drive on the road. Don't you know the We roads? don't belong on the road. Yeah, we so don't belong on the road. The road's closed. You're not supposed to be here. So we live this is road. a road. What is so the I definition have... between a road and a bike path? We have a bike path. Oh. We have places for bicycles to go. This is a road. It's not right to have the bicycles on there. And we have to pay attention all over the place. We pay attention to this. Yeah, we do. During the day, they're already there. Yeah. So how, how did you experience this um, sense that they didn't want you there? Oh, uh, you go down. Dirty right? looks. Yeah, it's like sitting. Dirty looks in the middle of the road. Down. We have to you slow walk, down. You walk down your driveway to the road, and people give you dirty looks. No, drive. We try to drive, drive out. We try to drive. You did out. try to drive out on July 9th. July 9th what was the last one, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. That was yes. Sunday. That's the event we're talking about. Yeah. You tried to drive out. People gave you dirty looks, so you went back into your house. Uh, I, went, I did my business, came back, but I don't like. The, I, I went the other way though. I went towards Byron. Was it Byron's one? Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, not that not towards, not burning from the other town. way. No. What, once towards to the district road or the town road. Okay. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm confused. I thought at the beginning you were saying other people told you that they other drivers too. that they got dirty looks, but you they had an experience. Too. I did too. You did too. Okay. Well, I, just, I, kind of, I kind of associate that. I get all the time driving the road, even during the regular days no. when you're out there in bicycle, you're in the middle of the road and stuff. You try to go around and they kind of get like, the look. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's give someone else a chance. Yeah, if you want to say something. Okay. Um, would it be okay if I addressed you over there? Sure. Yeah, so that'd be great. Else? Even better. Yeah. Can we get everyone to state their name for the record, too, please? Yes, David Pope. Hmm? 
and I live on 2543 County Road, and I have been on County Road for 43 years. And first, I want to thank... You don't want to block there. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. I, I want to first thank Carl because and Gina because you've both been very generous with your time, and I learned a lot, and I appreciate... Um, our conversations. I enjoyed our conversation too. And I appreciate all of the work that you do for the community. I've been in the community for a very long time and I was one of four people who started the first neighborhood watch in the area that we're, we're discussing. Um, there are so many reasons why this road is inappropriate for this kind of event. I, I need to tie a few things together. First off, I don't want to confuse a sense of community and convenience with safety. So one of my points is going to be safety. Um, living here for so long, I can put you in touch with my neighbors, particularly across the street, who have had three cars in the t time period of a year end up in their um, front yard. And what stopped the cars from hitting the house was some of their landscaping that they had to redo three times. There were also, within that same year, in the same eyesight distance in both directions, were two other cars that went off the road, including, you're shaking your head, you're familiar with these accidents because you've seen them going by? Well, like, I spoke to another resident of County Road who mm -hmm. described similar mm -hmm. incidents. Um, and, and it's, the road also is unfamiliar to a lot of people because we have a lot of tourists. We have people going to Woodbury Campsite, to Curtis Pond, and then obviously Moore's Farm, and they're unfamiliar with County Road because they come from other states. Um, along with, uh, when Carl and I were talking, um, we were talking about um, a place in Montpelier where the roads could be closed down. That's very convenient because the roads are so close together that it's easy to make detours and bypasses around some of the roads in a city. This is a main road, that, it's a main thoroughfare that connects the communities, and I have heard from them. Uh, one in Plainfield and two separate people in Worcester who um, are not liking this idea. The part about safety I need to connect because you might be asking yourself, so what does this have to do with the road closure? Because when the road is closed, it is much more safe. It's true. But now the door is open. It's no longer that situation. I'm already seeing the difference. There are a lot more bikers on a road that's fast and it's narrow. It has curves. It has hills, I'm, I'm on the top of a hill and a curve, so I see a lot of things. I would be happy to invite you all over to my driveway. I have all kinds of parking space. I will be the proper host. Just tell me what your favorite drink is. <laughs> I promise that I won't give you dirty looks or flip you the bird. Um, and, and there might not even need to be any words if you just see what's going on there, if you can imagine bikes there. Um, Carl informed me about part of this safety in our conversation about that if a road is too narrow, and correct me, Carl, if I get this wrong, if the road is too narrow, then part of what's safety is to have the biker drive in the middle of the lane. And my comment after that was, <coughs> I can understand that, that makes sense if you're going 30 miles an hour. But when you're going 40, 50, 60, 80, and now there are people on the road um, that are passing, other people that are going 
a little bit beyond the speed limit. They're, they're passing, and it's not safe to pass. That's still, what does that have to do with the road closure? Because when the road is closed, it's safe. But it isn't anymore. Because what we're doing is encouraging people. I, I think you all know this. It's primal. It's instinctual. It's natural. And when I say it, you're going to agree. For every act, whether good or evil, paves the way for its repeat. If I ever forget that, all I have to do is watch my cat for an hour. That's what's natural. Advertisers love to get you to try something the first time. Try Kellogg's Corn Flakes again for the first time. Do you remember that commercial? We're conditioning these people. And, and what I was trying to make a point with Carl about we, we could probably have a bigger expanse of a, opinion that could um, be over a greater distance of the community <coughs> if the road was closed and I gave the <coughs> instance of Vincent Flats. I was saying to Carl, well, it's straight, it's flat, there's a place to park the cars at the, at the school. Um, and then he reminded me that, um, but it's boring. And then, in closing, um, we realized, because of the speed of County Road, that some of what's enjoyable is the ups and downs and the curves, and that's what makes it interesting. Um, that's like giving them not just the peanut butter, but the chocolate, too. What, when we encourage people like this, I really need to understand how it's not going to keep bringing more and more of them to the county road when it's open. I know when I bike that if I'm familiar with a path that I've enjoyed, I'm going to remember it and I'm going to go back to it when the opportunity presents itself with the right time, temperature, um, the distance, whatever is the most convenient. And because we're tempting them with such a nice road to bike on, they're going to be coming back when the road is open. I'm already seeing it. I, I've been here for 43 years. Um, and I, I just don't want to conflate um, convenience um, and sense of community that doesn't seem like it's going too good with the looks and the gestures. Um, and, and I have more questions, but when I look through the um, information that was given to me in email about um, the participants on County Road, I added up the adults and children, and there were 50 adults and 26 children. Two of those adults really should be children, particularly because of the gestures. Um, I, I feel as if a lot of times we get involved with um, unforeseen consequences. And that's what I'm concerned about. Um, if if you can convince me, if you can persuade me, because by the way, I don't want to be right about this. I would rather be wrong. And so if you can convince me and make me feel better about encouraging these people and me seeing the increase in speed and danger and inconvenience to the community, um, I, I want to know about it. I, I want to understand how you can take this point of marketing it, basically, encouraging this to happen, and not knowing that part of the consequences is going to be that we're going to have more people on County Road when it's open. Um, so I don't, I don't want to interrupt you, but 
We do have other people that need to talk, okay. and you've talked for six or seven oh, minutes. Okay. So if you could wrap it up, sure. so we can ask you sure. some questions okay. and also have Larry talk, that'd be great. Okay. Um, I, I, just, I just don't want to be in denial. I'm here not because I want to be, but because I have to be because of my conscience. I can't imagine me not saying this and then something happening. Not it, when something happens or if something happens, when something else happens. I can point you to all kinds of people that can tell you about their experiences with, with cars if you want. You can come and look. I just don't want this to be the unforeseen consequences. I don't want to change this road's name to asbestos or lead paint road. And that's what I'm concerned about. So I would really like your help in understanding how we can ignore what's going on. I think we can't unring that bell. We can just tone down the volume. Okay, thank you for your... Well, thank you. Course. So do we have any questions? I have a question. Okay, good. Um, so are you concerned about car speeding in general on Captain Road? Yes. Yes. I am. And, okay. yeah. Yeah. How long have you been noticing the speeding? Um, it seems like it's been increasing in the last three or four years, and maybe a little bit before that. And I think one of the things is the concern of passing when um, they are going a little bit above the speed limit. I think that we could probably get the Sheriff's Department to not only uh, find out how many people are speeding, but what the average speed is. They're coming from Callis, where the speed limit is 50, and they're not changing their speed. I've heard that from another resident that there's been a lot well, of passing, a lot of a lot of speeding. There's, there's there. several cars, in particular motorcycles, stuff that are passing so fast. They're passing two cars on a curb um, just before his house. We've been watching. And it's an enforcement issue. I guess I know it's not the town. I understand that. It's, a, it's an enforcement issue. But it's definitely That's something that if you're in the middle of the lane, this guy, this guy's not, these people, Bounce said this guy, these people aren't going 50 miles an hour. They're somewhere going 80. Some are, are blasting by everybody. It's unbelievable. It's gotten, like he's like Dave right. said, it's gotten a lot worse lately. If somebody's in the middle of a blind corner on a blind corner, there's no place for that car to go. Right. So your primary concern is with safety with, for bicyclists and drivers? I think there's a bigger shoulder. Um, and, and I think because it's a main thoroughfare uh -huh. for a lot of communities and it's rural versus it being in a city <clears> where you can just detour easily, there's a lot of people that depend on that, um, more so, along with the, the also the fact of a lot of um, vis outside visitors from other other states, and they're not familiar with the road. Any more questions for Dave? Because I like Larry to have a chance to talk. Well, thank you. Okay, thank you very yeah, much. Thanks. Yep. Yeah, Point it. well taken. So Larry, you want a chance to speak, I imagine. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, thanks for having taken up this issue once once again. I know you guys have. We can't hear you now, Larry. I think, it, I think it was something on our end. It sounded like a pop here. Can you hear me now? Just hold on. <laughs> All right, you should be big now. Test, test, can you hear me? No, yeah, no. Just lost you again. I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yes or no? Yes, we can hear you. Now okay. Very good, thank you. Thanks for taking this uh, issue. As long as you don't say anything, the audience. <laughs>
Um, would you like me to continue or wait? Uh, Maybe now is good. Test, test. Right. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So somebody, somebody, give some kind of sign if you cannot hear me. So um, thank you for taking oh, this. Up. Point to my ear. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Um, thank you for taking this up again. I know you have really important issues to address this evening. Uh, I will be extremely quick. Um, we believe we had a very successful event on July 9th. Uh, as Mr. Pope uh, said, we had about 75 or 80 people, we believe, in attendance, um, all of whom uh, were participated. Uh, we got nothing but uh, raving and positive feedback, and I believe that is part of your record. I think Carl has scanned, scanned the surveys that we had into, uh, into the, town, uh, the town website, so you can read those, so I don't need to repeat those. Um, what, what I want to tell you is that given the circumstances that our broader community is facing because of the flood, we have decided as a group to hit pause and uh, um, not do the July, or I'm sorry, the, the August event. Um, we just think it's kind of uh, inappropriate at the moment to be closing a road and asking people to detour around on roads that aren't um, 100, 100%. And so um, we are not going to be uh, asking for your permission to do this in August. However, we would like to proceed with September and October as planned. Um, however, the purpose of my reporting back to you tonight uh, was that you wanted to hear from me and from the community about the event and its impact and you had the option then to decide whether to approve any future events. And so those future events would only be September and October. But we do recognize that any return to normalcy may take longer than uh, any of us want. And so as a group, uh, we are going to get together in August and decide whether we believe uh, proceeding in September and October um, are 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 good is a good idea. Um, that that said, I do believe the event was extremely successful um, and uh, replicable. Um, obviously, you've heard some concerns tonight, and I'm not going to address those individually unless you want me to. Um, but I'll, I'll I'll just leave it at that and answer any questions you may have. Okay, who's got questions for Larry? I, I don't have a, a question for for you, Larry, but I, and I read through the surveys and obviously I, I highlighted the East Montpelier and they were positive. My concern is the surveys that we got back, are they from people that living on County Road? Is it possible, since we're now talking about September, to do a targeted survey of those yeah. residents that live on County Road? I mean, I, I know a couple um, that live on County Road, and they loved it. They had a reception for anybody that rode by. Yeah. Um, so my concern is, are you the majority, the minority? And I'm not as concerned about as people from Callis or Montpelier, but I am about those that are directly impacted, like yourselves, that live on County Road. And, and normally, as I think we discussed last time, you only hear the negative. You hear the people that are opposed to it. Right. We don't know whether 80% think this is a great right. idea. And if there's a way that we could survey all 44. I just want to make one comment about yeah. that. When I posted on Front Porch Forum, I did not ask for only negative feedback. So I just want to state, I think we keep saying that, yeah, but it, sure. it, I didn't just ask for negative feedback. Yeah. That that goes to an argument that any election that's ever won right. by 80% that, is, is inherently flawed. Right. So, Thank you know, you. I just want to say that sure. there was an open request. I put Without you know, a doubt. No, 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 no. So. I got to get that. But I, just I also think that that um, it's situational. You either get a lot of positives or you get a lot of negatives. But you don't always get negatives first. You get everybody, depending on the situation, will, will rise to the, to the occasion and either be very positive or very, or could be very negative. So I don't think we need to lean that way. And, and I know the, the, the emails that we got last time 
when we sent out those emails were on the majority were negative. And I'm not saying that people just jumped in and, and I just don't, I don't agree with the fact that you always hear the negative first. I don't, I guess we'd have to take a poll on that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you could argue about that all night. Uh, could I, I do that? make a comment? Yep. What I would like to know is on the questionnaire, if it bit. could be, if it could be asked whether the people who have arrived will come back when the road is open. I would like to know that. Okay. Did, was somebody else? Right? Patty, do you? Patty Giovara, I, whenever it's appropriate, I'd like to jump in. I'm on the phone. Okay. What's your name? This is Patty Giovara. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you can speak. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I just, you know, I one of the, uh, well, there were a couple of questions that I posed to Larry and Carl um, after the event, and I, I'd like to, I didn't get an answer to those, so I just wanted to ask them again, um, because I know one of the things that was important to the select board was that the people who were, um, you know, stationed at the road closures, that they would have flagger training, so I am interested to know how many people were volunteering at the ends, and how many of those people had flagger training. Yeah, so um, two of us took the flagger training. Um, that's and obviously that's a minority of all the um, volunteers that were working. Um, I did uh, meet with every every volunteer uh, and told them what I uh, I believe their responsibilities were. Um, we had some difficulty arranging flagger training. Um, and it really wasn't until the last uh, two days prior to to the event itself that uh, that uh, we were able to uh, jointly arrange a time a time to do that. So um, does that answer your question, Patty? Yes, thank you. I mean, I just think that's an important, you know, that was something that was important, um, you know, to the select board. I just think it's important that that um, also, you know, that that be shared. And the other thing is my understanding was that there was going to be um, sheriff presence, and I did not observe that. I was probably at one end um, for an hour and twenty minutes ish um, throughout the event, and you know I observed that a sheriff stopped um, at about nine ten a.m. on the Barnes Road end where I was, and um, didn't get you know didn't just stopped talked to one of the volunteers and then moved on. And that was the only time that I, I don't know if, you know, if anyone saw that person anymore, but for the about, at least for the hour and 20 minutes or so that I was at the end of Barnes Road, there certainly was not a, um, a sheriff's presence um, at the event that, that I observed. And the third thing is I'm also, I'm curious, um, there is this count of how many people, um, uh, used the road. Um, I'm guess anyway, I, my observation, and I noticed there was some data being collected was that there were more cars diverted than there were you people using the road. And that was at least in the time that I was observing and the data that I noticed. So I'm just curious, Larry, if you had the count of how many cars got diverted, um, at each end of the road. Yeah, Patty, I do not have I do not have that number, and and my guess mm -hmm. is probably it. You're absolutely right. It was more more cars diverted than participants using 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 the road. Absolutely, I think that's uh, that's legitimate, fair observation. I would, mm -hmm. I would I would I would say that I I believe, and this is subjective, that that most of the people who were diverted, um, who stopped and and talked to our flaggers, um, asked what was going on, and when they were told, they said, "Okay, fine," and drove drove on. Some of them clearly were not happy about it, but I would say the mo most people seem to think that was a fair and legitimate use. That again is a subjective my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. And but I will say that a number of people said, "Oh, gee, I didn't know this was going on. And I, is it, you're going to do this again? Oh, great, I'll come back next month or something." So, um. okay. 
And, and yeah, Patty, I, I do sh I do share your concern about the sheriff, and I expressed this to Carl also. Uh, we were supposed to have a uh, sheriff present the entire time. I had a long conversation with Brett Myers, the Washington County Sheriff, about this. He was all, all over it, very excited. He assigned somebody to it, assured me that they would be there for three hours, be at both ends, be patrolling yep. the thing mm -hmm. back and forth, doing the loop. I felt really good about that. And then when I also never saw the sheriff the entire time, I was a little bit concerned. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so Patty, do you have more questions? No, no, I don't. I, you know, I guess my, you know, just my, you know, kind of summary on this is I'm, I'm, I, I guess I'm just like have this sense about why are we trying to convince ourselves or why is the select board trying to convince themselves that, that we should be doing this? I guess I'm just missing the point here about, I, you know, I mean, it just seems like there are some valid concerns. I'm not sure the, this event didn't go as planned from a safety standpoint, which was a key concern. And I'll just say that it didn't go as planned from a flagger standpoint, from having the sheriff there, at least as two points. So I guess I'm like, I'm just kind of, well, I mean, it, now that I haven't heard the select board talk, okay, but but I just want to say, like, like, I'm not sure why. I just consider, like, why you're trying to convince yourself this is a good idea. I guess is my would be my question. So anyway, that's okay. that's all I had to say. Okay. Well, we can answer that. Joe, you have your hand. Yeah, up. I'd briefly like to address that. Um, I don't have an opinion for or against this event. I'm trying to figure out, just like everyone else. I did attend from about 9.50 a.m. to maybe a little bit after 11 a.m. near Templeton and County. And it was my observation that um, actually it seemed like maybe 40% of the cars diverted were very interested in the event. Um, several actually said that they were going to be coming back later that day. and. I think, I mean, cars were constantly showing up to park and then people were leaving with stuff and walking on the road. So that was just a little, I just needed to add this slightly different observation than what had been put to the record. Um, I do think that the matter should be put to the residents of County Road. Like I said, I don't have, I think that's the best way um, to gather more data on it. I don't, like I said, I don't have an opinion, but to, uh, to address your question, I'm not trying to convince myself of anything. I'm going on what I've observed and th the best that I can make sense of what's been given to me because it is, it's not black or white yet to me. Okay. Um, and I, I, I also spoke to a resident at length who didn't care. He was like, the chief concern to me being there, speaking to residents was the speed of County Road. The event was, oh, I don't care. I can get in, in and out if I need to. Um, but please address the speeding. That's what I heard the most of. OK. So Carl, you want to um, address Patty at all or her concerns? Uh, Since you've been kind of the lead um, sure. board member on this, I sure. thought you might want to sure. block Patty's on the phone. That's yeah. Um, no, I mean, Larry and I share your concern that the, the sheriff didn't show up, and uh, you know, Larry wrote Brett Meyer an email afterwards and said, hey, what happened here? And I joined the thread and said, yeah, please, please uh, keep me informed about this. And, I, ha and uh, I haven't heard anything back from that, and I don't think you have either, have you, Larry? I have not. No, so that's, that's a problem with the, the sheriff, and, and we need to be talking with them about that. I was disappointed with that. As far as um, the, the flagger training, I mean, I, I wasn't at the event, so uh, I, I can't you know, speak from personal experience about what it was like at the barricades, but uh, if Larry and somebody else went to the flagger training and then briefed the people at the barricades in the essentials of it, uh, then that, that, uh, that to me is not a failure of the flagger training. That's somebody in the town getting the training needed and passing it on to to the folks who are going to be doing it how long was the flagger training larry it was the last four hours so we got through it in three though so okay 
So to stand at a barricade and, and talk to people about a, a road closure, uh, three or four hours of training seems kind of excessive. And I think that's a lot to expect of, of volunteers, but for somebody to get the training and to explain the essence of it to people seem, seems to be fine to me. Uh, in terms... I was just going to comment on flagger training. From yeah. what I understand from Larry Smith and our road foreman, there are some pretty specific requirements that if you are considered a flagger, uh -huh. there's a reason people are supposed to. In fact, the road foreman had some concerns of releasing the signs. Uh -huh. Upon expressing his concern, flagger training suddenly occurred. But um, yeah, he was concerned even about passing those signs over because you are supposed to be trained to use those signs, any signs that they're using. Uh -huh. So just wanted to mention that. Okay. So. Um, <clears throat> As far as uh, the folks on, you know, getting more information from the folks on, on concrete road, um, I, I think, uh, yeah, it's great to have more dialogue with the folks on county road. Uh, we got to remember that this is a town road, and everybody in town pays taxes uh, for this road, and uh, everybody in town has a right to use it. So uh, I, I think that we also need to take into account the 75 or so people who enjoyed it this time. Uh, we got surveys back, uh, enthusiastic surveys back from 28 people who, who used it. Um, apparently in November, there were a couple hundred people uh, who, who were there. And it was, it was quite a fest. So I, I think we need to be thinking about all of that. Is that, is that a positive comment? I mean, are you saying that it's a public road, so the public that used it, it was appropriate to have 70 people using the road? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I, I guess I'd go the other way and say this, the public road is meant for the public, not a public. It's meant for all the public. And we pay taxes on that road to keep that road open 24-7. Exactly. Uh, every season of the year, I think it's even a requirement in the uh, road and bridge standards that mm -hmm. the, the road be open and available. And just arbitrarily closing the road for four hours inconveniences people who live on that road. It scares some of the people that live on that road. Um, it impacts the people who are driving from Callis, Woodbury, or Hardwick, or Montpelier that want to go that way. Um, though that public is, is not experiencing and not benefiting from the taxes that they're putting to that road during that period of time. Yeah, we're talking about 1% <clears throat> of the time a month, something like that, to have a special event. Wow. Yeah. And I can see it being done on a on a class one road, which a class one road is a road that's shared by the state and the town, and it's maintained the majority of the time by the town. <clears throat> you're usually in a quiet area, you're usually in a village setting or a town, a city setting, but they're not a class two road, which is that one is probably even a federal highway. That is, in t you don't, I don't know, I don't think you know either. County road? Yeah. County road's a town road. No, I know that, but, but for instance, there, there's a road that goes from Hardwick to Greensboro. That's a, that's a class, wait a minute. So that's a, that's a class two road, but it's a federal highway as well. So there are federal highways here. You just don't know which ones they are. But, but the point I'm making is that, is that um, I think the road should be open and available to everybody. Can, can I make a quick comment? Yeah. If, if this was someplace else, if we did have this over on Vincent Flats, I probably wouldn't have a voice in it because I would think that it would be up to the people who are directly impacted. So I think that skews how we interpret how the community um, understands this. Mm -hmm. And then a, my second question is, how can we say no to anybody else who wants to have events. We're not going to be able to say, well, it's just, we, you can't because the road's too fast, it's inconvenient because of all of the things that I said. How are we going to say no to that? All right, because you're, you're going to precedent point of view, yes. that this is a precedent that we're establishing and that That's we correct. can't say no to the next person. They're all good points. So I have one question for you, Larry. So the rumor has it that you are selling some sort of bike at the event? And this is no, a promotion, no. a promotional event? No, no, not at all. I just, I'm not saying that that's something I think, it's just that's been passed on to me is that you're selling bikes. That is incorrect. Okay, thank you. We did have a resident giving away food. 
Yeah, whatever. I just heard that about the bike thing. I was like, I don't know. I know nothing. Yeah, this gentleman has his arm, arm up. Gerald Rose, a little tiny Rose. Okay. Where are these people parking? On this, are they park? Where are they parked at these events? I don't know. I didn't go. I don't go down there. So uh, where are they parked at these events? Where Some parked at the um, lower parking lot at uh, Morse Farm. From what I understood. So is this going to become a circus now? People come from all around, come get preemies and going up our road where we're kind of like barricaded in our house with this event to get over with because we can't. You know the one percent. Of the time we can't use it like we're a public but we're not allowed to use it because somebody from east Montpelier, washington washington state whoever's here just happened to be visiting wants to go to the circus on the county road i'm just worried about that how this is going to impact you know even worse as this gets to be more and more of an event is it going to be more often is it going to be longer i, I, uh, I have relatives that come up here from you know and visit and they come and they see this they're going to be told but well, you don't live here obviously go somewhere else they wouldn't know how to get to my house well just to be clear i never would have voted for something if i thought that you wouldn't be allowed to use it because it's my understanding that you are allowed to use the road to get yeah. in and out of your house well that's all good and dandy but when you have the children there the children. going all over the place this was not just a, this was not this just for you this is for everyone else that had it's, it's a public road. I mean, it's a public thoroughfare. I understand that. I understand they can ride the bikes any day of the week. They can walk any day of the week. But telling me that I can't drive 40 miles an hour on the roadway because there's something going on. And we want to have it. They didn't want to have this when it was, the road was all a mess. Right. We're get paid. So it's get paid. Now we want to use it. They can turn it into a bike path now. So. I have a question for the residents that are on County Road. Did you receive or were there signs out letting you know an event was going on in the event? I believe a postcard was sent out in the uh, event. Was Someone did. Was there and was there on, on, was on, on uh, and, the nine? And did you know what to do if you were leaving your home? Because that was one comment that was made to me by one resident. They well, weren't sure. They were slow. Watch so, out, basically. Okay. So there were signs. Uh, no, there's no signs. Seen. There's nothing in our driveway saying we just happened to know it because we were here the very first time before this event took place that what was what was going to be how it was going to be handled. That's how we know. I don't oh. know how anyone else knows. They go on the road. They see people on the road. I take that. I'm acting natural. It did go slow because there's somebody in the road. I take that being natural instinct to do that. But I can't hear. I can't hear. I can't speak for everybody, obviously. So you're saying it wasn't the signs? I didn't see. There's no signs in my driveway. I didn't see it. I didn't see no signs in my driveway. Yeah, I can't. I can't. Well, I don't think they're going to put signs on every driveway. I think there's going to be some signs on the county road. Oh, maybe, maybe that. Maybe there were. I don't know. That was my understanding. Uh, in were there signs there? What's that? I was just asking Mary if there were signs. Pretty hard to see signs on county road out your driveway. What? Well, well, Gina asked the question: Were there signs? Correct. I just was curious. What? And I don't know if there were signs. I, didn't I haven't gotten a clear answer whether there were signs. <laughs> Would you, would you describe the signage used for the event, please, Larry? Yeah, so um, so uh, Guthrie gave us a lot, a lot of signs, which we had at each end, uh, warning people that there was a, um, uh, an event upcoming. We had road close signs. We had slow down signs. We had the detour signs. Um, mm -hmm. I, we had we had some cones up at, in different places at Powderhorn Glen and at uh, um, Cassavant Road. Um, uh, could we have used more? Sure. Um, that was certain when our team got together and we talked about what would we do differently. We um, we talked about some additional signage that we think would be helpful to to the event. But um, there was signage at both ends, warning cars, yeah. slow down, event in progress ahead. Okay. So if a resident had not received that postcard for whatever reason oh. there was no signage indicating that was my question if, the, if i were in my home did not receive that postcard it's mail is mail how would i know an event was going on when i went to leave my driveway there, oh, certainly, to certainly. know to drive slow unless there happened to be a, someone on a bicycle that i happened to see right when i went out in the middle of the road. I, that was my question there, there was a question larry from patty um indicating that she thought last year there had been more use of phones in the middle of the road during the event, um, what are your recollections on that? Yeah, no, that was true. And uh, the reason there were cones was because the sheriff put them there. <laughs> the, the Vermont State Police oh, last the, year? Vermont State, Vermont State Police, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 So. I do think that there was some confusion about the signs. 
And one reason that I see that was because I think that some of the people that were on County Road that I observed were not aware that there were going to be residents that were traveling because two of them were um, uh, frowned upon with the looks and the gestures. But also, I saw um, a, a family of four, two parents on bikes, and the two children were very far behind them, and then they realized that a car was coming heading toward Dallas, and I don't think that they were expecting a car. And so I think that when, when it says road closed through traffic, I guess doesn't compute as, hey, there could be some cars coming. Mm -hmm. Because they weren't prepared. Totally, and this is really anecdotally, I asked a handful of people who participated in the event, did you encounter cars when you were riding or walking? And all of them said yes. And I said, and what was that like? And they said, oh, they, they were all driving slow. So it was great. No problem. Okay. So we're going to have to end the discussion on this because we're out of time. But um, I don't think we can make the decision tonight about the September event without a little bit more data gathering. I think that we really need to do that to make a better decision. Um, so maybe we're going to... Maybe some guarantees from, from the sheriff? Yeah. Yeah, we have... That's a, a major concern, yeah, concern I have, too. The safety concerns, and also we should gather some data from the people living on the county road so we have a better representation of what's going on. Because we, really, we don't really know. We've got some folks here that are not happy. Are they representing the majority of the people? Blah, blah, blah. So... We do know that we have one select board member that's not in favor of closing the road because you made that? some good points. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, that's fine. <clears throat> I'm not trying to put you on the well, spot. No, you're not. But you made you good know, points. I'm, look, I'm looking out for the liability yeah. of the town because we own this thing now. Yeah. And, and complacency kills people. And when you're doing flagger training, even if it's three hours long, it's three hours long for a reason. And there are more people killed through com being complacent than there is through acts of God and um, and I want to and I take that seriously because you know who's going to pay for that price it'll be us that pays the town will be paying deeper pockets and um, and I also have have uh, individuals who are along that road who, who have spoken to me mm -hmm. and I feel like I represent everybody but I do represent them too as well oh yeah so I think we all feel that response. So I'm not changing my opinion vote. anyway. So. No, no, I'm, I'm not asking you to. I do know that one of us is against this, the, against the whole idea, um, which is fine. I understand your points. Um, but I think that we need, need to gather a little more data before we make the final right. decision. And the thing is, it's been kicked off for two months, which is a good thing. Um, and Larry's also going to meet again to find out if we're even going to do the September event. So, We've got a lot of uncertainties before we make a final decision, and we've got some time. So, um, because we have a lot of other things to get to tonight, we're going to close this part of this agenda item, and we are going to gather some data, and we'll set a date for our, our meeting. So, Larry, when are you meeting again with your group? Okay. Yeah. So we have um, two meetings in August. Is that it, Gina? Correct. And what's the later date in the August one? August 21st, is that it? I don't have that in front of me. I don't yes. Is August 21st? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so we'll put that on our agenda for August 21st. So we'll make a final decision then. And you'll let us know if you're even considering the September date. And we'll work on the data gathering anymore. Okay, and and just just one last thing, uh, select board. As as I mentioned to you right at the very beginning, the whole point of this was sort of a a, a community building sort of activity, yeah. um, trying to bring people together, have some fun. Um, yeah. Uh, um, not at all interested in pushing people apart and and getting people upset with each other. Um, I'm sorry that it has happened uh, to some extent uh, with with that. Um, yeah. I would like, I would like to push forward 
just a little bit and and maybe maybe in the end we'll all go you know all agree that it is it is a, a lousy idea and we should bag it maybe we'll get there no, I, don't, I, don't I don't think, think i don't bad idea. Well, I don't think the experiment has been been completed. I think we should complete the experiment and then decide. Yeah, I don't think it's a bad idea. I just think there's some aspects of it that bother some people. And it's getting to a point where it's almost too much effort. You know, it's a lot of acrimony going on and a lot of effort by all of us for something that was not supposed to really take this much effort. But as we get further into it, it's like, wait a minute, this may not be worth the effort. So I think that's what you're saying also. Yeah. Okay, so we'll be in touch. And we'll put it on our August 21st meeting. Thanks. Thank you folks for coming in. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to the next item, which is a town treasury report. And what do we have on that? Well, this is more just providing you the official report. Okay. Um, the budget status still has a lot of journal entries and whatnot that the treasurer is working through. So I can't really give you a good feel yet for where the general fund will end for the year. And then Michelle also completed the internal controls, internal financial controls checklist. It's an annual uh, document. The only piece that I questioned after she provided this to me today was the question of do elected town auditors attend financial training? I believe one town auditor did attend a training this year, so I just asked Michelle to ask that question. And if we did not get the answer to that question, then we should check don't know instead of no, um, because I'm not sure that no is the right answer. So yeah. that's the only thing that may change on this document after my review. Of Are it there today. any changes on this checklist from last year? No. Except if if this one shifts, because if we don't definitively know the answer, then I don't think yes or no is appropriate. I think we need to shift to don't know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> With the budget status, um, I was speaking with the external auditor last week, so there's at least one item, I think, that may be a positive impact to that. Right now, it's essentially showing us flat with or with a $3,000 deficit for the year. Now, keep in mind, that includes $177,000 revenue for ARPA for salary costs that's offsetting the costs. But based on my conversation with the external auditor, I think we may have a rather significant journal entry that still needs to be posted. That may swing this. That the other makes way. that more of a deficit? No, that would be a positive. Oh, a positive. It's a good entry. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. But I just, I just have not had time to pour over those, the financials um, at not? that level of detail. Why not? It's, I, it's you know, nothing going on the last couple of weeks. Um, so uh, right now, it, and really, that's a treasurer function more than it's mine. So um, I'm kind of letting the treasurer have her time with the numbers and. I'm fielding the pieces that I need to deal with. Quiet. Well, <laughs> I'm just studying the yeah, uh, yeah, documents. But okay. Anyway, um, just circling back to our minutes, I believe the July 14th select board meeting actually took place on July 17th. Monday, July 17th. Yeah, what's the 17th? Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. So. so, without objection, I'd like to amend the minutes in that way as well. I was at that meeting. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Is this an okay time to use the restroom? 
<laughs> better than not using the restroom. Yeah. Since I'm sitting next to you. <laughs> So our tax rate is going up by 5.9 percent. If that's what we're getting out of that. So for taxes, you have the calculation as it is, based on the budget, based on what we've been provided by the school, et cetera. Yeah. And then you have a version where I reforecasted the current fiscal year based on the latest employee employees um, that we have and their elections as it relates to health plans. Huge caveat on that. Anyone can change their mind in January. Right. So those figures could change. Um, but, you know, I the think mostly <laughs> Chair Gardner has been very focused on trying to find some savings that could mitigate some of the yeah. tax rate in increase. So this is one option if you are comfortable rolling that. I mean, I'm comfortable with the figures because I know what everyone has picked today. And we have had some changes since that budget was set. Right. Um, so, assuming everything stayed as is, I'm coming and and they don't surprise me with a thirty percent increase instead of the average that I've seen a fourteen percent that I assumed in these figures. So I did assume a larger increase in the cost of medical insurance as well. Fourteen percent. That's the, it was a range, but that was the middle yeah. of the range. So if that comes in higher, again, could ding into this some too. I don't think that should be significant though. I mean. So the 5.9% is where you sell that. So that, well, that's, it I depends on what the select board wants to do. This is your decision, not mine. Yeah, I was just trying to nail down your final figures. Well, there's two options, waste yeah. one based on the budget as it is, and one based on an adjustment that has a $34,000 decrease in the cost for the and fiscal and year and that we're now in. Yes. So. It's a pretty good one. Yeah, we like those. <laughs> Sounds, makes sense. Sounds logical. I mean, you'll be looking at this again at the next meeting. This is just yeah. where we are today, and yeah, I'm just the next meeting would be get some. My mind yeah. Around all the different figures. I mean, I think the question them. is, I don't know if the select board has a targeted number that they consider palatable for the tax rate to change, then that can drive, I mean, yeah. in the company world, it's not uncommon to lock down a budget with a top side adjustment and you find the savings later. Um, we could certainly find savings as it relates to ARPA. Um, however, that's been highly cautioned against oh, yeah. taking that approach. So let's see, uh, what was the total homestead tax rate last year? I don't see that on here. But. You have the actual calculation. So last year, they, you have spreadsheet. Oh, you have that. Yeah, yeah 2022 yeah. is on there. Yeah. Oh, I've got, oh, 23, right? Yeah. 2.38. So, yeah. yeah, I've got it. Yeah. yeah, I've got it. So that's 14 cents. I got a question. Sure. Um, you know, you put down here municipal grand list and, and you show 3,147,000, whatever. Yeah. Um, when I look at, think about grand list, I think of the entire grand list of the town, which is, should be like uh, 300 million or yeah, probably it would be. They Yeah, it. they divide it. But what I'm just saying is that's the grand list. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then my yeah. question, though, because that was a question, kind of a question, but my real question is how much did, did the grand list change from this, from Last year to this year. 8%. That's not your two. That's on I didn't see it though. It's 0.8%. Oh, right there. Increase of 0. Okay. Yeah. Increase of 0. So yeah. that so that so that 8% yeah. would be is going to be it's going to be added to its money that we have available to us. Yeah, we 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 have a little bit more money than Right. It's 3,147 and it was 3,121. Right. So we have So that can cushion our budget a little bit. Well, that's already in this calculation. Right. That is right. driving this guy. Yeah, well, so well, that's kind of why there I would have been a benefit. Yeah, yes. so I already figured it in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ignorant question. What was the grand list divided by to get? 100. 100. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I had two zeros. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, the hard number is, now, wait a minute, what was the tax rate 
in 22? Because I think it went down last year. It did. Last year's did go down. And what was it in 22? In 21. Again, 21. 21. Um, I'd have to look. Well, we have 23. It's FY 22, and, and we're talking calendar year 20. Yeah. 21. Yeah, but, but whatever. Whatever, this is What right. was it the year before? <laughs> <laughs> Without getting too argumentative, yeah. the year the year before. Yeah. How's that? It's perfect. Okay. Get in back. <laughs> What's he doing down there? Oh, that's my like, call. Oh. oh. <laughs> and it's um, so slipping. So, right, I'll talk about So the year before it was... If I can get my files to open, I can look. And then I won't ask any more questions. I mean, that too much on that. <laughs> well, it is important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, really important. The residential was uh, 2.4808. Non residential was. 2.3709. So 248. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're sort of in the ballpark at 252. Mm -hmm. It does seem like a significant jump, but if taxes, the tax rate was higher two years ago, two, a lot higher than 238. Right. So. All right. And you know, one time, you know, you, if you shave 2% off this year, that 2% is going to be there next year. Oh, I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, and it I might was, be added to 4% or 5%. So no, no, I know that. Worse. I was just concerned about the education tax. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, if that education tax went up $0.09 from last year. Because, and that's going to keep going up. Uncontrollable. I know that. And, right, no, no, and that's less why kids in school means we get less money. That sucks. That's what happens. And that's why the, the non-homestead tax rate is actually less than the homestead tax rate, which it was initially designed, the, the way this rate structure was initially designed was that the, the non-homestead rate would be more. But the non-homestead folks don't have a vote on the budget for the school, so when the school goes over a certain percentage on their budget, that's added to the homestead tax rate and not to the non-homestead. Me wrong, I'm not sure about that. Well, but I, I can't correct I'm you because I don't pretty know. Pretty right on that, I'm pretty sure. But if it's 2.48 a couple of years ago, yeah. and we end up at 2.52, then that's an average of you know, around one percent a year over the last two years it's not increase. Bad. It's not yeah. really that. It's it, it's palatable in my book. Yeah. That okay. The tax rates bounce around a little bit. It's up a little bit higher, but considering all that's going on, right. that's really not that bad. It's less than inflation during that time. Yeah, that is. I'd help quite a bit too. So. <laughs> okay, so let's let's um since we're gonna look at these figures again at our next meeting and when we set the tax rate at the final so I think um, does anybody have more questions? What's the meeting that we set the tax rate at? It's usually in August. Yeah, first is that the first the first first so meeting our August. next meeting, yeah, in other words, yeah. Okay. Okay. If we don't have any more questions on the town treasury report, we probably ought to move on. Um, the next thing uh, we're behind is review draft of 2023-24 property tax rates. Oh, I guess that's what yeah, we're doing. Already, we already Where I did that. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought we were doing the town treasury report, but I guess I inadvertently moved on to the next agenda item. Very good. You're so efficient. <laughs> oh, I tried to be. You, meant, you really meant to do that. Yeah. Um, review technology quotes. Reuben Bennett, owner and senior network engineer, RB Technologies, LLC. Replace town office network server. Implementation of cybersecurity user suite one. Hello, Reuben. Reuben. We have the expert here. You have the floor. Um, well, I, honestly, I came prepared to answer questions. Um, That's good, because we don't like people <laughs> to run on and on and on. But you can run on a little bit. Alright, here's the notes version. Your server is up for replacement. Yep. So we submitted a quote for replacement of the server. Um, and um, as the world has shifted around us, the cybersecurity 
landscape has gotten worse and worse and worse, and so we're having to do more and more uh, as businesses and consultants to you to uh, keep you in. something that we've done for 15 years um, and was a complete blind spot. And we realized that if you need good security, you know, we've been sort of chiding clients about having their Excel spreadsheet full of passwords or worse, the notepad full of passwords in the middle of a folder um, and have been running our own highly secure environment for password and credential management and realized that we should really be things out. Uh, so those three services stack together and they integrate with your Office uh, 365 environment um, to integrate all of those services for everybody who needs them. I can give a little bit from the town office perspective. So one, as it relates to the network, while our purchasing policy states that we should get multiple quotes um, for this, an important factor that doesn't that that policy doesn't take into consideration is no one else knows our network and our system like RB Tech. So in order to get an, a quote, one I wouldn't even know how to do that um, because I don't speak IT. Um, number two, I honestly wouldn't place a lot of faith in a quote that we received because they don't know our system and the, the odds of something missing in a quote that would be slower. I would probably say that there would be reasons for that, that we would likely end up uncovering over time. Um, so it makes sense to keep this with one organization or company that we trust and does provide us with exceptional support. As it relates to cybersecurity, I think I get more than anyone else in the office, at least one to three to four a day, am I receiving an email asking me to click a link? Yeah. We are having a problem with your order. Here's your receipt. I get more than anyone. However, everyone in this office has received them. I sent out, we had someone that did, as you all know, I think at the last meeting, someone that did click on something that thankfully realized they shouldn't have done that, called RB Tech immediately. RB Tech went in, took a while, but cleaned out what was starting um, on that person's computer. Luckily had not gone very far yet. So it's just so easy. I'm. I am pretty good about deleting. I deleted two of them today, um, but I'm also human. <laughs> you get busy. I'm getting a lot of more emails right now um, with a lot of links and connection to different things. So it's very easy to not think and click something. So it just, it's gonna get any of us. Michelle probably gets them second most in the office and then it goes from there. Um, Rosie has gotten them as well as um, I know the municipal coordinator has and Tyson did as well. How does this relate to those of us who have town email addresses and are using our own computers for them? Um, all of the email goes through the town system. Mm -hmm. um, so the spam protections and, and those things will be in place. Um, through Outlook? Of which uh, computer you access them okay. from. Okay. Um, the credential management would be for Okay. Um, 
And I think when key is you're not on the network, the problem mm -hmm. is when someone in here clicks something like that, you're, we are actively on our network. Yeah. So anyone that gets in can access our network. No one's going to get to the network, even if they went through one of the other emails. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and more, it's, it's sort of a, a layers game, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, no, no one of these tools are going to protect None of these tools collectively can protect from all of the different threats that are out there. But um, the proper tools properly deployed will put you in as good a position as you can be. And then when you add the user security training, that sort of awareness piece, um, that we use the term a healthy dose of paranoia a lot around the office. Um, now you're in a position where you're you're being sort of reminded. So if you get one of the phishing emails and you click the link, it goes, ha, you know, gotcha. But here's, you know, here's what to look for in the email that you just got that you click on again. Um, so Scott's got something. This might be a naive question from That's okay. a non-tech person. Um, why are we having an internal server rather than being on the cloud and is this typical for um, towns of our size to be going through this type of hardware? Um, it's money is the bottom line reason. Um, generally speaking, it is less expensive to run your own hardware than to farm it out to somebody else. Um, cool. So you're, you'll see in the headlines that there are is a bit of a feeling of cold feet about the cloud right now. Everybody's been on this like relentless march to put everything in the cloud, and now they're getting the bills. Yeah. Uh, and as it turns out, the cloud actually means not your computer. And well, that means somebody is. AWS is, we could be more expensive. It is often, and yeah. in fact, usually more expensive huh. than on your own. Okay. When you know, if you if you amortize it out over mm -hmm. the lifespan of this piece of gear and you look at the maintenance costs and the support costs and the different pieces, and you sort of roll it all in together, it's generally more expensive to run it on somebody else's gear. The, question, the next question, is there why um, we're buying refurbished equipment? Is there a reason why we're not buying new equipment? Uh, cost? Well, uh, obvi obviously cost, um, but is there legacy or issues with buying refurbished? No, and to be frank, I, I hate the word refurbished because what this actually you, is. You put it in here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just being honest. Um, I'm being honest. So it is technically refurbished gear. What it actually means is gear that was, um, it was misprocured. So it's brand new gear that got returned uh, because it was ordered in huge bulk and ended up uh, at a quote unquote refurbisher. This is a company that we've worked with for five years okay. or so. Um, it, There's the, no other data on it, it's brand new. Absolutely not. Okay, that's an answer to the question. Yep, sounds good. <laughs> so Ed, you had, want to say something? I was just going to say with the cloud, you're losing some of your uh, internal control when you're, when you're out there because somebody else, and you know, that's being managed down in South Carolina or Texas or someplace on these farms. I feel yeah, more, yeah. I personally just feel more secure <laughs> having it. Yeah. Right Same. here. And also using Ruben, I feel much better about it than outsourcing to the Well, you're not supposed else. to say that, but that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, but, but you know, objectively speaking, yes. Yeah. There, you know, you guys are finding a, a decent balance between running yeah. your own stuff. You've got Nemric in the building. Yeah, um, it's it makes sense to run that in the building. Um, the cost for running it in the cloud is significantly higher. Yeah, um, and again, you know, when you sort of map it out over four yes. years or whatever, um, generally you're you're in the winning column. Yeah, uh, by running this gear yourself. Yeah, it's amazing too. It seems like. There's so many people out there, or companies out there, that are trying to pull you into the cloud. You have Norton is trying to pull you in. Uh, uh, Google tries to pull you in. Apple tries to pull you in. They all try to get you to go in and then start paying a monthly fee. Yep. And I've resisted that. <laughs> oh, well, I, I don't know if we like it, but I can understand why. No, 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 I do. Yeah. So we looked at QuickBooks. Uh, QuickBooks is a perfect case in point. So <laughs> you know, it used to be like, 
700 bucks or 800 bucks for a three user license that was good for about three years until they made you do a forced upgrade to the next version. And they have been relentlessly pushing people to move yeah. to the cloud service. Adobe and Microsoft is the same. Yeah. The, so the, you know, now it's $1,000 a year or 1100 bucks a year. Mm -hmm. And if you have multiple company files, now you need an online subscription for every single company file. So we mapped it out and it was $9,000 a year. For SQL? It also doesn't work. Because that's what I was thinking of doing myself. If you have one company file and it's one user, then you can... It'd be okay. It might be okay. But if I have two? If you have two company files? Yeah. Now you need to too much. There's, mm -hmm. there's lots of redundancies, obviously, yeah. backups, and in, this, in the whole system, the server goes down. <laughs> you have you have a backup that is here in the building. You have a backup that comes to our building as well, and that is what they call a mutable backup, which means that if something happens to this network, it can't affect the backup that's out of the building. And it downloads every day or every you know, overnight. Overnight. Okay, well, one, where is the server here? Okay. Is that climate control down there? We, we have to kill him. <laughs> we have to kill him. <laughs> yeah. Him okay. I, I, the, yeah. The reason I'm asking is, especially with climate change, the way it's going. Uh, I, yeah. I know I dealt for years with a company with a big server room, and they had problems. And they had to do several servers running, you know, for multiple states uh, operations. But uh, they had problems with the climate control because the, the units were overheating at points. I mean, luckily, it's cool down there. Humidity. There is a dehumidifier down there. Yeah. Honestly, didn't think about going down and emptying the it's bucket this morning. <laughs> so it's low tech. When I think about it, the dehumidifier gets emptied. Yeah. Well, we need a new building in my view. So you know, then you put a server room in. When you do that. Oh, sure. Okay. We'll put you in charge. That's not going to happen. Right now. Double attack. So, yeah. So what is the expected lifespan of the server? So you're the select board, I can tell you four years. Count on four years. Four years? But for four years. Okay, if we okay. weren't the select board, what would you tell us? Um, in year four, uh -huh. we evaluate how the machine is running. Okay. And we may say you're good to go for another year. Okay. And we get pretty uncomfortable after five. Really? The ours is already, they've so already spent significant time on ours. Mm -hmm. We were, I was a bit worried one day, as were they, that server was no more. How long so, has that one been in here? It's four years old. Four years. Huh. And the so, cy cybersecurity user suite, is that an annual cost or is that a, pardon? That's a month. So we're being so asked a for a one-time setup fee. The 3600 is a one-time setup fee? And then what's a monthly a cost after that? It's $100 a month. Okay. Yeah, I think it's $105 a month. Okay. $10.50 a piece. Okay. So, what's the increase in cost that we're looking at per year with everything added up? New server, the new server is a one time. Well, that's fee. one time. Yeah, yeah, that's like a the capital cost. The only thing cost. would be the cyber suite, which would be 105 per month. So that's it. Is that something we haven't paid anything for in the past? Mm -hmm. No, no. Yeah, this is new. Yes. Yeah, and then we, we set aside money for costs for the server. Like if we had to replace it four years, we should be setting aside money. Well, that should be the server is not included yeah. on the capital yeah. plan. Yeah. Well, it needs to be though. It's well, I know, but it hasn't been. <laughs> yeah, no, there's no. That's kind of why I was asking. There's, yeah, there's no plan for IT infrastructure in the capital plan. Right. Well, there's, well, there's no plan yet. Yeah, yeah it, no. It's yeah. on the agenda to add a technology line because I pointed out that these cost the telephone systems and mm -hmm. when you add it all up, it's, you know. Yeah, and software coming up, maybe a major software thing is what I would think. That same as another forty, fifty thousand uh, dollars in software. Could they do? So we do have the utmost trust, but we do not have any comparisons. Correct. That's what she's saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what she said, it's hard to get it from here. No, I understand. I understand. Yeah, I understand. Just, yeah. I'm just right. bringing up that point. You're clarifying. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like professional yeah. services, you generally don't have to go out for bid unless you want to. I'm, you're right. I'm just talking about. It's like, you, know, is you don't this, go for the cheapest lawyer, you don't go to the cheapest doctor, you don't go. I understand. The $7,540 refurbished, is that 
should it be ten grand? Should it be five grand? We we don't have any reference other than I'm not it's total integrity. I'm not, but from my our position, my position, and my spending wisely, yeah, taxpayers' money. I, I'm going to have to assume so. I understand. You know, I'm just bringing that. With the information that we have in front of us, we're going to. I know have to we're not putting so. it out to bid. We don't. Well, but we're not obligated to go out for bids. I understand. I'm just yeah. No, no, I understand. Full faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You, I, you could we're putting our faith years. in a town resident that has served us well in the past. Yeah. It's, just, it's the only one concern is that this I know. Well. Yeah. My full faith in Ruben. Yeah. I have no clue. We are handcuffed to RB Technologies, <laughs> like the protagonists and the defiant ones, and uh, like should, the protagonists and the defiant ones. At the end of the movie, we're we're in a good relationship. I, think I, I just, just feel like we're in a hundred percent. An agreement that yeah. we have someone that served us well, yes. we trust them, I think it's good. I, yes. I mean, we, that's kind of how I work. It's like, hey, I, this is I, a good person. I just question, yeah. Scott, though. Yes. Good point <laughs> yeah. brought up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think we should establish a uh, corporate technology tax in town oh. for a corporation. <laughs> 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 should, should you really, since we're talking about taxes and tax rates, and home business, there should yeah. be some sort of special tax rate. Oh, well, I, I, not a low tax rate. I, I want to remind rate. you that you're on record saying that. <laughs> we did this recorded. Okay, I, so retra I retract that. I think Ruben wanted to say something. I, I will just to, to Gina's point. Like, you could go out and you could get a bid for a server that's three thousand dollars, and you could go out and you could get a bid for a server that's twenty-five thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that what you need is a bid for a server that is scoped and will do what this organization needs yeah. for the next four years. Yeah. Um, so I, I can comfortably and confidently say that this is a server that will do those things for you in a cost-effective way. Right. So, right. you know, <coughs> able to spend ten or twelve thousand dollars on this server? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that wasn't my point. Eight thousand. No, no, I'm not. Like, I don't. I don't. Your questions are completely valid. I, yeah, I don't take any exception. To the right, question. I'm, I'm like always uncomfortable when we don't have comparisons in bids. That's I totally understand. Yeah, uh, the challenge is that if you go out and get bids, it's going to be an apples to orange. Right, as, as Gina said, we. That's what Gina said. We have no clue. Uh, <laughs> that's fine. Honestly, to go out to bid is. In my opinion, you're bidding your entire IT relationship. I, because I, likewise, can't get a service from someone else at RB Tech I, I and agree. just then take yeah. care of. No, oh, thank you, Scott. Just, and you're at the meeting, and we're gonna note that. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm I'm going all in favor. <laughs> okay. So, Ed, you want to say something? Just, just on bidding, you never take the lowest bid. It's a general principle that I've learned from my lessons in life uh, because. Oh, wow. Well, you, you, you run into problems, you know. I know, I know from from the accounting world. I've seen people they, they hire the cheapest accountant. The guy shows up on a motorcycle from Colorado, wasn't licensed, so the report was never accepted. And and that's you know that's a true story, you know. That the, the point the point. Show you did this, and, and you, you pay the guy and you submit it, and it doesn't go through because he's not certified. But the point is, we don't have. Any other bids? Yeah. And, uh, no, no, I, I, I agree with what you say. Okay, that's, that's the point. So we're, we're yeah. kind of running out of time on this. Oh, that, 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 that's fine. It's almost like bedtime. <laughs> right. So um, the next step, I believe, in this uh, item is to make a motion to accept the bid. I would like to make a motion to accept the bid for our new server and whatnot for our new technologies. And, and the implementation of the cybersecurity user suite yeah. one. I second that motion. All, all, and all, 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 all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all. I appreciate you coming in. We appreciate Glad it. Glad to come there. Yeah. <laughs> well, if anything you want to talk about, you know, why components of IT. Happy to do it. Well, it's an important part of our world, unfortunately, so that's the way it goes. You gotta do it. Um, so, let's move to the next item. It is consideration. I, 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 I believe the motion also authorized the town administrator to sign the, the quotes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, the next item is consideration of employee laptop purchase. So I have a quote for a laptop. Um, 3000 um, I'm probably um, yeah, 3,089. I had that number in my head. 
Um, this is really to facilitate remote, as you all know, in every interview, remote is an option that is discussed, but we really don't have a means of doing that without having a laptop. So, and as we know, we just had a weather event occur and um, it would be helpful if people could work remote. So is the laptop something that people are going to be taking home or is it something that's going to be here? It would be the computer here, but it's available to take home for remote work. Right. I just priced computers just, I just bought one a week ago. Uh, why $3,000 computer versus the $1,000 one that I just bought? IT expert? <laughs> I, I, I know some things question. in my head. That but about that. I mean, I just literally bought this a week ago. <laughs> yeah. The short version is that you can buy a cheap computer for a lot less money. Um, the longer version is that there's an even cost, like getting it set up and, and deployed so that it's ready to go for the organization. And if the machine only lasts for a year because a lot of the warranties on those cheaper machines is only a year, then you're at risk of having to do, you don't get to spread that out over the same basis, right? So you want to get a good machine that's going to last for a longer time. Um, the other reality is that our supply line is difficult. Um, so we can get a couple machines. It's this crazy horse race right now still. Um, and a lot of the machines that we can readily get our hands on are the more expensive high-end machines. Oh. Which is frustrating and annoying, but, and like I, we can, we can. There will be like a two thousand dollar machine or an eighteen hundred dollar machine, and there's fifty of them in stock. And by the time that we've gone through the order approval process, like in a day, they're gone. And so, okay. it's, but, it's just a frustrating. Yeah, I mean, reality. I went. I was in Best Buy in Keene, in, in whatever, in Lebanon, because we were in New Hampshire. Best Buy had hundreds, well, I said, you know, whatever. They had tons of computers. My only question is just, other, if this is not an Apple, just <laughs> since these things last three or four years, it just seems like a lot of money, yeah. $3,000 for a computer, when I could have bought a better computer for $1,700, and we're using this for Zoom and email. We're not doing graphics. We're not right. doing other, just, it, $3,000 still seems like a lot of money, even with $150 for Microsoft and whatever. Well, I can tell you one thing. This computer that we're currently using for Zoom was crashing under everything that I was trying to do on a work basis, which is why I now have this laptop. So, yeah. so I just what wanted percentage, to... What percentage of the 3100 is uh, the computer cost and what percentage is the setup cost? I actually don't have that. Is that just the machine? Or is the it computer cost? is... 2568 and installation is 522. And to, to put it kindly, the machines that you buy at Staples and Best Buy are consumer grade machines. They're not meant to be used in a business environment. So they are much less expensive because they're not as good. And people would be sharing that computer when they're out, or would that be one individual's computer? Um, likely one individual's computer, but it's possible it can be shared as well. Technically, any of us can log into, and right. it's not configured for you, but you can do basic functions. I was just thinking, sharing generally reduces the life of a computer, too, like sharing a car. Yeah, I mean, all of the machines that we sell are the, the mid to high end renewable thing bags. So they have a nice space frame, and they have like some features inside of them that make them more durable and tougher. Uh, and specs, they've got more memory, and they've got better CPU, and you know, they've got sort of the internal horsepower to do what they do better for longer. Um, or the hinges, like there's you know there's a whole bunch of little nice. aspects to them. Um, it's a significant price difference between a, a, you know, what you can walk into Best Buy and get. Um, and uh, and and these machines. So Scott, your machine. Good luck, Scott. Is, yeah, good luck. I run cheap I, I, and I do, I do Zoom, <laughs> and I run I run two or three you know, training systems on it. It works really well, and it's and it's all metal too, by the way. Anyway, okay, this seems like a lot. It's a fair question. Don't worry, it's a fair question because Scott, I'm, a, I'm just like you. We buy yeah. laptops that are inexpensive. Well, last four or five years. Yeah. 
And this is not going to be used. And this, and this is going to be not used every day. This will be used. Terry, Terry just wanted it. No. I just want to think about it. Hmm. Well, is it going to be used every day? Is it going to be used as the everyday It will likely become the replacement computer? of the desktop, correct. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like Ideally, everyone will shift off of their Taking desktops to a laptop. Really it's the only way you can really work these, remote. These things, yeah. 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 Right. I was just wondering what, how long the lifespan is projected to last just because so many machines are just becoming obsolete. So the turnaround is becoming so much quicker. That's a difficult question to answer. Is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> If I understood the question, it was how long should we expect a laptop to last? Yeah, I think so. Under, under and over yeah. the server. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, so budgetary, uh, four years. In reality, about four years. Mm -hmm. um, and place and four years. just to back off a, a step, we don't worry too much about the warranty status of machines. So as long as it's performing and it's doing its job, it's fine. Right. Um, when it starts to slow the person down behind the keyboard, that's when we start to um, encourage folks to replace them. Because as expensive as a machine is, the person behind the keyboard is way more expensive. And as soon as you're starting to sort of lose efficiency of the person, then now technology is not doing its job. It don't work, it's not useful. Okay, I think we're good on this. Okay. But I appreciate your Do you really? Point you just, no, I don't. Can I just no. say that? No. 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 This is not, you're not bullshitting you? I'm not. Okay. <laughs> I move to authorize the town administrator to sign the quote for the laptop for the municipal coordinator in the amount, um, yeah, in the amount stated. I'll second it. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Guys, appear to have it. They do have it. Um, I'm not meaning to rush the discussion, but we have a lot of things to go over. Oh, yeah. Can I take the rest of this stuff? Okay. <laughs> Consider a consultant to draft request for proposal to design town garage replacement. I believe it's Kath Catherine or Kathleen? Kathleen. Kathleen, Kathleen Gent. Gent. Or Gent. 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 She used to work. Does she still work for Central Los Angeles? Well, no, she retired. She was running it or something. Yeah, general manager. General manager, yeah. So I think that's in here. We have it in our packet. Oh, we got her resume. We have a resume. Um, so what's the cost? Oh, terms. Three to 5,000. I, I think it's a good thing. I have a question. Yes. Um, we are hiring her to Draft. Am right. I missing? Does she have drafting experience? She's in her resume. So I read through it quickly. Well, it's really drafting a document. For yeah, it's not drafting. Not like it's not drafting. It's, it's, oh. it's, it's, it's writing. It's, yes, it's, it's writing a document. She's making a proposal and not. Uh, Correct. She's not like an this RFP, is, she's not does, she, a proposal. does she have enough experience? This is the person, this is yes. someone with experience in, that can in, speak the language we need to speak. She has a master's degree in English. No, 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 she has no, another I, I, I read through the whole thing. I just wondered whether she had experience with bricks, brick and mortar for a proposal for a building rather than her experience on here. That, she that's did this question. process for Central Vermont Solid Waste right. recently. I saw that. I yeah. saw that. So, yes. In, bu in buildings rather than in collecting garbage? Well, they need a building to take the garbage to. So she it was, was for their new the facility. Building, the she was, in the, she was so involved in the building yeah. of the building. A more, oh, she was involved yeah, in drafting the involved RFP involved the to seek the architect the and designer design. to design yeah. the building. Okay. So she okay. participated or or led creating that, the scope. Then that answers my question. That would be included so in that document. she has the expertise Correct. and the experience Correct. to draw up an RFP for a building. Okay. Yeah. That was my concern. I attempt to make a motion. <laughs> you know, there's only one thing that um, I guess the answer is no. That I did. <laughs> that I, so the next item is the town ARPA spending plan. Yeah. Is that what you're here for? It. Yeah. So. It's all, all of these items that we've just gone through. This one and the next one are all connected. Right. So. So we. The need thing to is that we move. Uh, we're moving ahead to hire um, Kathleen Jen for this. The proposal means that we are spending some ARPA money. Correct. And Ed is here because he was on the committee to talk about spending the ARPA money. 
correct? Uh, yes. Yeah, but we're also have already sort of made a decision on spending some of this money. Yeah, that's uh, that's your priority. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify oh, that. I, I understand. Yeah. Okay. No, okay. No, no. I know where we're at with it, but I, okay. I've, been, I've been following. Oh, you're sure. Okay. <laughs> Good. The next discussion really is that we need to get moving on yes. spending yes. this money. Yeah, I understand. I'm very concerned that we have less than 18 months left to go. Yeah. Oh. Well, 18 months to target the money. Yeah. Committing the money is very risky. If anything falls apart with that committee, that or with that commitment, that money is gone. Yeah. The vendor can't Ruben fulfill the commitment. Yeah. yeah. The the overall recommendation is to try to spend the money, or have a very very short commitment. Okay. Anything you change with that commitment, it's gone. This okay. I'm just. I I'm not. All I'm saying is we're committing the money. Uh, we're starting to commit the money right. by hiring somebody to put out the RFP for our town garage, yep. which is fine with me. I just don't think that we've been completely clear about the direction that we're headed with everyone that's been involved with the town committee, talking about the ARPA money. We're, we're moving ahead, and uh, we haven't really said that. And we, but we are saying, we are saying it right now. Yeah. We can get any yeah. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm fine with, with that. With that. Was, it, was there um? When is she going to execute this? Is there a time frame? No, she, she said within 20, 30 days. Yeah, 30 days. Okay. 30 days. She can really just get started. I mean, 20 to 30 days, and that's fine. Get that's the contract drafted for. Okay. So, I've had experience with this lady. She's professional, and I think she'll do a great job. I, I've been to meetings that she has headed up. Let's move on. Okay. So, so her proposal is for terms of $80 per hour with the establishment of a not to, see, to exceed dollar amount likely between 3,000 and 5,000, depending on project parameters. So how are we going to set the not to exceed amount? Just say five. OK, and who will do, who will set the project parameters? Well, Who's going to work with her? On that that oh. will be all in conjunction. She will need to be speaking with likely yeah. Seth, yeah. potentially John, given yeah. his experience, and certainly Guthrie. Yeah. Okay. Guthrie would be the? Main person for project right. parameters. And she is also going to look at the. What's that? And anybody else who might be interested. Yeah. Because right. there's other people who are, like, you know, are just kind of circling around the. Well, project. Connor. We got Oh, but that's that's there. beside. Connor would would come into play. Remember, this is to draft an RFP. Connor, yeah. I think, would oh, come yeah, into play time. as a potential Bitter. bid. But it just seemed like you could have some input on. But that would make it too close. Oh, then you have it's complicated. To, uh, that, uh, it's complicated. Yeah. No, you don't want to ask him. No, 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 because he's got to be a. He'll be one of the this yeah. is where yeah. having a Kathleen, the point in that is she has the expertise yeah. to know the questions to ask, to know what needs yeah. to go on this document. So, me being in the room with her, Guthrie being in the room with yes. her, you being in the room with yeah. her, answering those questions. Yeah, that'd be great. I think Perfect. will get us where we need to go. Yeah. We don't need to make it too complicated. No, we don't. I think it's probably less, it's going to be less than 3000 personally, at the end of the day. Yeah. I don't think she's going to spend a huge amount of time unless she probably already has a template that's going to work. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I move to authorize a town administrator to draft a contract for Kathleen Gent to perform the services as outlined in her proposal with a not to exceed dollar amount of $5,000 and to coordinate the uh, Kathleen Gent's work with the town. That's How's that sound? Sound good. good. She second. Oh, Zoe second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I appear to have it. They do have it. Um, so that takes care of that. Moving right along. Moving along. Uh, discuss town ARPA spending plan. Right. <laughs> That's the next item? Yes, that's the next okay. item. Great, thank you. So this is really to define next steps. We've had a lot of discussion, but we really need to start getting pen to paper um, as it relates to this. So one thing we didn't specifically call out in the motions of the acquisitions or purchases that have been approved um, or contracts in this meeting is that we would be using ARPA funds for those. So. 
on page three of four of your select board annotated agenda, you will see where I provided kind of an update of where we are. So assuming the select board concurs that the network server, cybersecurity, laptop, and Kathleen's not on this thing, on this list, but then Kathleen Jen um, would then come into play here. So with Ka Kathleen, 354,000 um, remaining. So. On that, on that, <clears throat> on that total ARPA funds, if some total 735, if you go to the middle committed, I don't know, where does, where does this have? Oh, that's a bad formula. Sorry. Okay. I was doing this quick today. Okay. That was last minute change. I personally fully excuse you. Excuse you. Excuse you. So we've estimated, or we've essentially committed 403 at Kathleen, 408,000 of our 762. Um, I have honestly no real frame of reference of what the design of the town garage is going to cost. I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't know enough about the project to even, and I don't know enough about the cost of these things in this area to estimate that. I can say 30 grand. That's what uh -huh. I had in my head, ironically enough. <laughs> that's what well, I would have guessed. Well, and that's and that's pretty much what it's it's going to cost to design the Central Moss All Waste Management oh, okay. uh, Hazardous yeah. Materials yeah. Facility. Mm -hmm. What what is the building going to cost within two hundred thousand dollars? Construction, probably probably a million. Yeah, or more. What well, probably one point two. Okay. Fortunately, you don't have to buy any land, but you do have to modify the land. Is there? Yeah. Okay. Just, I'm just curious. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, the town would have to take off a bond. I mean, we do have a little ARPA money we can throw at it. Okay. If that works, and that will reduce the amount of the bond. We've always expected we were going to have to do that anyway, right? Yeah. Take a bond. Yeah. It's just that we have some ARPA, uh, ARPA money to soften the blow a little bit, so it's okay. Yeah. Um, and that's why the town office building has been. On the back burner mm -hmm. for a number of years because we already have a bond of paying off the fire station. We have about 10 more years. Mm -hmm. So that's and why you're 32 we're still paying for it. 32 is done. Is that no. finished? Yeah. yeah. You're 32 is done. East Montpelier. East Montpelier, right? East Montpelier. Right. 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 Yeah, because all that changed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's true. Okay. Uh, anyway, okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, I think we're moving along with the ARPA spending plan. But you're still nervous. Yeah. So I don't know how we move forward on continuing to identify. I need help from others now. I mean, I've managed to I mean, we just come up with a to put it to town garage. Yeah. It's that has to be clearly defined. Until we see that moving, I think that's a very risky thing to put all of this say all of this money is going to go there. So, okay. one thing I've thrown out here is the um, ash tree project. Uh -huh. So we could look at the 31000 that was spent this year. We budget fifteen for that effort. We yeah. over doubled that budget in the current year. Yeah. So we could take a portion of or all of that and consider that a use of ARPA funds. Um, that is an appropriate use. So the thing I would say is keep in mind, if we can utilize ARPA funds for some of our spending, such as ash tree management that we are going to be doing anyway and i believe when you spoke with that with the resilient roads committee about that even discussed doing more than was done this year in the upcoming year uh -huh. we don't we only have a fifteen thousand dollar budget so if we're going to exceed that right yeah. there we so if we're trying to monitor budget mm -hmm. um arpa gives us an ability to use those funds to fund that project mm -hmm. That may free up money in the future. Then um, we could move that could be grand into the allocated to other items. Exactly. So I think there needs to be some creativity, but it needs to kind of be not just me um, thinking through some of this, so we can use these funds. I'm personally concerned about just committing funds <clears throat> with the intent to spend by 26. Your contractor, for some reason, has something go wrong, and they can, can they cannot fulfill your contract. Those funds are gone. That seems like a ways away, though. It's three years, 26, 1.3 right now. So yeah, and the last like, year, the last year feels like a week. Yeah. I understand your concern, but I don't think that we're at the point where we have to start committing our money to other things. At this point, I mean, I do understand the concern, but it seems like we have some time frame here. If we're going to hire Kathleen Jen to come up with the RFP, 
within 20 to 30 days, we're moving along relatively quickly, and then we can go to the design phase, and maybe we'll have some hard numbers fairly quickly. Okay. By the end of the year, I would think. Where are we with discussions on the ARPA committee? Well, there is. I'm the upper committee with Ginny Callen, <laughs> like two yeah. people. I did reach out and I got some feedback from a few people in town that were interested but not necessarily committed to it. And I said basically it's a very short term committee. We want to get in, get ideas. Yeah. Ginny was, brought up the thought that we should be considering some of the nonprofits, uh, one in particular, the benefits of town. I don't know if that's. Con uh, this money is restricted, and I don't think that was the intent of, of the money myself. We, uh, right. we can use I'm, the funds I'm to support capital, local. Okay, I, I'm on the capital budget committee also as the chair, so I'm looking at this from, you know, I've been doing this for a while. That item, I've been trying to get more money into the budget <laughs> for several years because that has to be done. I mean, for the garage. Yeah, yeah, the garage. And so it sounds like you're somewhat committed to putting the proper money to the garage. No, that was kind of my point in the beginning. We have not taken a vote on that. We, no, we have not taken a vote. Okay. Well, I don't know if we're voting or not, but we are going to, I guess, we've already reached out to the town and, and Ginny's involved. So I think we should do a public meeting and just get ideas uh, and thoughts. Uh, the risk with that is you may get a lot of ideas that, you know, don't fly. Yeah. Uh, a couple of people that, that reached out, I have a feeling, have thoughts that aren't going to be. Uh, conducive to, to this. And there was a purpose for this money, and that garage is really falls into that purpose of that money. Yeah. And yeah. as does nonprofits, as, as Gina was saying. That is one thing I also wanted to mention that I didn't write here was if we wanted to, I believe Twin Valley Senior Center has already come before the select board, but it was right. premature. Right, yeah. The select board had right. yet, not yet moved forward with this. So the question, one question for the select board is, do you want to engage with local nonprofits about a potential contribution to any of those? Well, that Jenny brought it up. So I think we have one public hearing, and I want to do it like early September, the first week, set a date, and just say, come and let's talk about it, and then we can give you feedback on what, yeah. what people came in. Yeah. But the nonprofits, and she also just sent me a thing saying, with all the damage from the storm, Maybe that we could use some of the money for road repair, but I pointed out in a subsequent email going back, I think, uh, I think Gina was involved with the email too, yeah, that, you know, with this FEMA money for this that we're eligible for, yeah, the state's going to fix the roads. And we're, you know, and some of it got washed out, my road got washed out a bit, as you know, Seth, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's, that's normal. It happens every year, so it's part of the operational budget. So we were lucky in some ways, uh, you know. Um, mm -hmm. We're covered on that. Yeah, I, I don't think that's a good use of the money. No. And I'm not sure about the nonprofits. I, I know uh, I'll give you my household. My wife does not think it's a good idea to give money into the nonprofit sector, use it on that, that thing. Whether she would show up at a public meeting or not is uh, <laughs> debatable. But um, I think that where you're heading, I am in full endorsement of it. Well, we could reach back out to Twin Valley Seniors. We probably should because they came in last year and asked us about um, some work they wanted done, and they were in the ARPA money would have called, would be able to be spent on that. Yeah. Uh, so we could just reach out to them and say, yeah. "Hey, are you still yeah. thinking about that?" Yeah. I mean, so. and, and a small contribution to that, or redoing it. Gina's uh, been really a great asset because she's. <laughs> on top of this and, and funneling the money, like she said, there's ways of funneling it to make sure that it gets utilized. Yep. And and the, uh, I know what you just said, Seth, I'm in agreement with, we can do this and get it spent within two or three years. But, but remember, we have to go to the town meeting with a bond proposal. And so it's a bigger project than you, you might think in terms of getting this uh, out there. So Especially I, the yeah. bond goes down. Yeah, and construction right <laughs> now. True. Um, yeah. I don't know what the, you know, the big commercial construction companies, I mean, we have contacts within the town of Connor, who's one of the bigger ones, so that's a big help. We have Lodge and S, too, but yeah, they I, do that all the time. Yeah, but I'm just saying that uh, you've got, uh, for municipals, I think it would be right, but right now it's hard getting contractors, you know, for, for doing jobs. So you want to have a public hearing in September? Well, I think it's, I think it's important that at least you get the opportunity 
Yeah, that's why you said whatever ideas yeah. come up, come up. It's, it's our responsibility to accept them. Well, it's not okay. So it's not our responsibility actually to reach out to the public. No, you can think about it a couple different ways. And many towns have. Many towns have decided. We, the select board, are elected by the public. We are in the best position to know where to spend money. And so they've elected just to move forward. We could go the other direction, where we go out to the public and, and vet ideas. It's not a terrible idea, um, but I'm saying that um, we, we could choose a different route, and it's OK. Yeah. Well, the committee, like I said, there's only two people that signed up, so it's not much of a committee. Right. <laughs> now, we could run the public hearing in one of our slides. But yeah, I think that once you've done it, and I also think it's yeah. due diligence, yeah. uh, so it's sort of like, like you should do it this way. Yeah, it, we could well, devote um, a certain uh, first part of our September select board meeting. Yeah, we want to get I think it's the 9th. Yeah. It's the 9th of September, I think. And, uh, you know, from 6.30 to 7.30, and see what happens. So you, can we do that public hearing at, yeah. the, at the, oh. Yeah, as part of our board. select, then okay. we can start our select board meeting um, as soon as the hearing is done. We okay, don't even actually let's have do to that. Set let's do it right before. We'll set a time for the beginning of it. So yeah, we, I, like I said, I think three people. September 11th? What's that? September 11th. 11th, yeah. Okay, so three people responded to yeah. the front page for on the post. Yeah. Uh, it, on the, 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 it's fine, we'll just do it. Yeah. So. And we'll make it part of our meeting if we can. I think we can. Yeah. So it goes with the flow, so to speak. And you're pushing it, you know, you're, I think you're pushing in the right direction by doing the contract for the proposal. Yeah. So that's good. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Everyone okay with all that? Yeah. All right. Um, so the next thing, we're right on time. Consideration of Northfield Savings Bank Town Investment Account. Oh. What you have in front of you, we had a second meeting, Gina, Michelle, yeah. myself, yeah. and is it Cody and Megan? Is that who? Is it Cody? I'm drawing a blank on the name. I think Cody's an investment so. banker. Yeah. Clay. Clay. Hey, close, close. Clay is, um, Northfield uh, has a kind of Chinese firewall, meaning um, Megan is our rep. That Northfield handles our banking responsibilities, and then Clay um, ha is in charge have our account for brokerage. Meaning, if we wanted to buy a suite of CDs, T bills, as we discussed in the last meeting, he would be the one that we would deal with. Um, this is the, uh, the document, uh, plain and simple. We, this is a, really, a highly redacted version because yeah. there's a lot of my personal information on yeah. the other that would not go on the website. Exactly. Um, it was a very positive conversation. While we were on the phone, she kept going back and forth. Our major checking account, or our, a major part of our assets, we are now we are now earning like 300 basis points, three percent, where we were, um, and we are actually not at the threshold. The two million in that account, but she was able to, you know, we're, we're a bit, they want to make us happy, we just moved in. In any case, she did us a nice favor and we're earning basically 3%. Currently, we could be earning close to 5.5%, which is on a million dollars, which is $25,000 a year. More than we're earning now, roughly. Right. Once again, cash flow with, um, with Gene and Michelle, it will be all short term. If the T bill goes out of business, we're all fucked. <laughs> you can quote that. Um, so, <laughs> so basically, the continuation of the last conversation we've had a couple times before, we think it's prudent to go forward and start investing this money. And, and so, would the money be? I mean, we have a lot of money in that account. Mm -hmm. It would be transferred. What is our next um, <clears throat> big expense that's going to come out of? Well, it's ongoing with the road repairs right now. I but don't know. Remember, these are very, these would be very, very short term, like very school payments. Okay, so split money. So, oh, liquid you, liquid could, yeah. you buy a T bill, you buy these T bills, you're, not, we get that, you're buying so. them through a broker, yeah. meaning you could buy a T bill that is due in a month, in two months, and in two days you could sell it. Okay. Would you be losing money? You would technically be losing money if interest rates went up. Yeah. But if you hold to maturity, yeah. 
majority the, the, is the money the money that we're that we're going to invest yeah we are not going to anything's possible yeah the but chances like, are having to um cash in these instruments early yeah i would say is close to zero okay because we're going to be we're going to be very conservative on the short-term interest yeah. uh, short-term instruments we're going to know that in three months we are not going to need this half a million dollars okay so we may buy one month two months three months okay. whatever okay or one month and keep rolling it over yeah but it is highly liquid you can get Okay. Almost everything back the next day. If interest rates go down, your principal is worth more money if you if you cash it in before we should. Okay. The other reason that Megan increased the rate on our current account to match the discussion, there was a certain account structure that could give us this rate, but there's a lot of reasons why it makes more sense for us to stay with our current account. They're working on some improvements to that other type of account. So she basically gave us the higher rate that goes with another account on our current account. Yeah. As it relates to this investment account, although we are setting it up today, until we have a defined process for how we were, are going to facilitate these investments, how we're going to manage the cash flow, we're not pulling a trigger right. on yeah. actually yeah. using this this account yeah. yet. Would be already this is up. just getting it set up. It's ready to go. Once we get a process defined, once Michelle has time to think through that, get yeah. her head around cash flow, <coughs> and figure yeah. out how to handle this, then we will move forward. Okay. This now it's being question. taken very very slowly with deliberate steps. But it sounds like it's a positive move for the yes. town. It's so no way to keep pursuing it. It's a no brainer. Once we yeah. get into the habit of this and <coughs> funneling the cash no flow, it's easy. Well, well <laughs> I've heard that as well. I've heard that before. I mean, Larry I've, Brown. <laughs> I've been physically doing this with Community Harvest to Central Vermont. Mm -hmm. We have $90,000. We're yeah. figuring out our cash flow, we're doing it. We're going to be doing this with the Unitarian Church in Montpelier. Yeah. It's, and through Northfield. Yeah. It's, it's a no brainer, meaning. If you have $100,000 sitting in your checking account, the no-brainer would be to buy T-bills or CDs at 5% instead yeah. of earning no percent. Yeah. That's the no-brainer I'm talking about. Yeah. As long as you have a, a conservative cash flow and you know yeah. exactly what your needs are. Yeah, yeah. Needs, needs are pretty well spelled out. Yes. Yeah. So that's the that's okay. So Gina, what is the process of developing the process? for this investment? I am leaving that to the treasurer. Okay. Okay. And will that come back to the select board or is that something that you could I would prefer that we completely revise the investment policy okay. that is on the website and we have a new version of the investment policy that is published before we implement this. Yeah. So it's, it's gonna be a simple cash flow statement the same this but is, I want this a is process what we need. Defined. This is what we right. have. Yeah. It's the ups and downs. Yeah. You have to make sure you have enough cash. Right. Yeah, like you would do your own home. Yeah. Right? And I would want to build that into the policy because it needs to be, all expectations need to be clear, not yeah. only on what staff is doing inside the office, but also so every resident is clear on what right. is happening with their money. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, absolutely. I move to authorize the town administrator to sign documents to establish the investment account with Northfield Savings Bank. Or with in finance. With what? Uh, well, now I can sign the DocuSign. <coughs> I'll second that. Do, do I need to take away with Northfield Savings Bank from the motion? I think so. Okay. To establish a town investment. Oh, yeah, account. you're right. I kept calling it Northfield. Yes, yeah, it's the. <coughs> Anybody with, have any. With Infinex Financial. Yes. Any yeah. further discussion? Any more questions? Anybody? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Yeah, you're fairly happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next item is VCRD Community Leadership Summit Attendee Nomination. I have a nomination. We have on our very select board a young community member who is jumping into town service and they said. benefit to greatly from uh, rubbing elbows with people at the VCRD Community Leadership Summit Attendee uh, at summit, and uh, therefore I would like to put forth uh, Zoe Christensen as the nomination. What does VCRD stand for? Vermont Council on Rural Development. Okay. Do you, do you need some background on them? No. Okay. Absolutely, Absolutely not. not. <laughs> <laughs> it's simple though. Yeah. Well, does, can Zoe attend? I could attend, um, unless 
you think that someone else would benefit more from all the information or benefit no. from the select board? Oh, it's a great opportunity for you. Yeah. 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 And it benefits the select board if you go. Great. Yes. Very much especially, so. if no, especially if nobody else wants to do it. Right? Well, he, she's the best you one. You did say you young person, so it's good. Leaves all the rest of the At least on this side. Yeah. <laughs> Are you supposed to say things like that? <laughs> they specifically said in their invitation. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. They specifically said. Okay, um, we have a motion on the floor. Do we have we have a second? I'll, I'll, I'll second it. I'll, 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 I'll step down and. <laughs> no, no, no. no, 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 no Scott it. is on record. You do it, Scott. It's in the minutes. Thank you. Yeah, I okay. appreciate it. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Congratulations. 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 Yes. You just got voted. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the next item, consideration of the FY 2024 grants and aid agreement. This is an annual grant that is done that is specifically targeting hydrologically connected roads in yeah. town. So this is, we've already applied for this grant. You approved the application. This yeah. is just oh. authorizing me to sign the grant. And we so are moved. so moved. So second. So second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, the ayes have it. Is that for you, Deidre? <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, and just so you know, Road Form and Perry is already in discussion um, with. Uh, in fact, I need to text him right now. Um, is uh, already in discussion with our contact at VTrans um, about identifying. Obviously, we have plenty of hydrologically connected segments that we can point to right now that can use yeah. some work. Yeah, you certainly know where they are now. <laughs> yeah. the the big big where the big ditches are. <laughs> the big become, they become apparent. Yeah. Okay, so let's not kill any more time with that. Let's, let's get go. Going let's here. get moving here. Okay. Uh, Update on change, road change, repairs and storm damage. So I forgot to text Rogue Foreman Perry earlier. Um, so hopefully he can join in. Um, but you can read Chair Gardner if you would like the first statement. First the, chapels requested that something be read into the meeting. It's in one the update on road repairs and storm damage? Yeah. If you read the first, the first, yeah, yeah. read it. Yeah. Bruce Chapel asked I provide this statement to the select board to be read during the meeting. The Friday after the flood, I was at Shaw's in Montclair. I ran into a member of our road crew. He was volunteering in Montclair, cleaning out debris from businesses. I thank him for all the road crew's efforts in East Montclair following the flood and explained many residents in town were very pleased with all the work. He went on to say that the road crew is very proud of Guthrie's leadership in dealing with all the storm damage and getting so much done in such a short time. I feel this is very telling about the quality of our town employees and the recognition of Guthrie's leadership skills. We are very blessed to have such a dedicated road crew. He's a superstar. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is. Um, so the rest. He is about to come in now. He probably would have blushed at that. <laughs> <laughs> He knows I forwarded him. Okay. I always share things like that. Hello, Guthrie. Hi, Guthrie. Hey. Good evening. <coughs> so. I've got, I've got two or three potholes on North Street in front of my house. I'm waiting for them to be filled in. I'm just wondering when this is going to happen. I'm, you know, I, I need an answer soon. <laughs> in three weeks. In three weeks? There you go. Oh, okay. Maybe longer now you've, now you've asked them. You're on mute, Guthrie. <laughs> so is there anything people. we need to know besides what we already know? Uh, Probably not really. Sanders Circle looks like it's going to be very long term. I don't see a point in putting a temporary fix in there for the two minute detour to get around it. Um, the Horn of the Moon is going to be a progress to get down through there. It's going to take some time to do it right. Um, and we should be over there on possibly Wednesday afternoon. Uh, we want to get Fitch open back up tomorrow. They've been They've been getting by with very little for uh, for the last couple weeks. So, hey, Guthrie, Guthrie, how's the um, the part time person, the the driver? Has he started already? Yeah, uh, is that working started. out right? Yep, he's he does great. Very gentle on the equipment, well, the trucks, and uh, yeah, he was great today. He worked a full day today. So great. 
So just to recap what we have in here, uh, number one, uh, Guthrie and I met with a river scientist um, last Thursday to view a, a few different locations. Um, but in particular, two permits, temporary permits came out of that for Sodom Pond Road and for Sparrow Farm Road um, because those particular areas require work essentially in the, in the waterway. So we need to have a temporary permit for that. We reviewed a number of areas with her, um, but these were the only two that were required a temporary permit. Um, Guthrie already mentioned Sanders Circle. Um, decision was made to just kind yeah. of put that one on the back burner for right now. Um, Sodom Palm Road hopefully will be open by the end of the day tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and yes, the Horn of the Moon, I can tell you from seeing it with Guthrie. Um, has challenges from beginning to end, so um, some of them more significant than others. But uh, that road definitely, definitely needs some some help. And yeah. then essentially they're just continuing to clean up the roads and yeah. get them back to the standard we all know and love. So on Sparrow Farm Road, the um, the place in question, I assume, is where the creek is by the trail entrance. Yeah. Yes. Oh, you. <laughs> and the temporary permits essentially give us five years. Um, okay. So it's a temporary fix. That particular location, in particular, uh, Guthrie. We as soon as we walked over to the edge, and Guthrie and I looked at the pipe. She hadn't. The river scientist hadn't walked up yet. And we were like, "Who? What is she going to say about that little pipe?" Um, it's a pretty small pipe for the amount of water that needs to go through there. So that's the reason why temporary permit. <laughs> okay. And then I had a uh, with a steel okay. pipe sticking out the other end. Say, say that again, please. Here's it's a little. concrete culvert on the inlet and it has this piece of steel pipe stuck in the dump end of it and that concrete the steel pipe the whole bottom of it's completely gone it had to have been a used pipe when they put it in there wow yeah wow okay and then i had a question about um, lower north street the, the steep part right before the montpelier line that's been a problem yeah. area for years and I've gotten complaints from Montpelier uh, about all the gravel that washes off in regular lane storms and ends up on their paved part of, of North Street. Now there's, and I believe it was you that, that I talked to about, about this uh, once in the past, maybe it was a previous road foreman, and I heard that uh, there were objections from residents there to putting in, to widening the road to put in a ditch uh, that would help take care of that. Now we have a ditch there uh wh wh what are your thoughts about uh using the new ditch that's been excavated for us and uh, you know making that a, a stone line ditch would that would that be helpful yes uh i've been in contact with a couple of the residents down through there uh one of them specifically was uh jessica i want to say it's Cobb, possibly yes. yes um and We've been in contact for like the last two weeks. I actually was over there before the rain and marked some things out. Um, and because they've had concerns about water running off near their wellhead. And then another spot where it was running off towards the pond pretty significantly. Um, so we want to modernize some of the drainage on not even on the side you're talking about, but on the opposite side. Uh huh. And, and probably above where you're talking to. Um, but that down through there on the Montpelier side, I am in hopes that we will be able to, like you're saying, I don't want to use the word widen the road, but we'll be able to put in a ditch that will better manage the amount of water that they are seeing down through there. Yeah. It, because that's the, for me, that's the second time in five years that that's washed out. So yeah. it's obvious that it, I mean, I know this, both of those were significant water events, but at the same time, it seems like five to 10 years, you have a significant water event. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Guthrie? Great job. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Guthrie. Yeah. Thank, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Awesome job. Really. really appreciate your support. You. Makes my job so much easier. But you know, don't yeah. worry about pressure from us because we know you're all working hard. No, no one here is in a big yank to get stuff up to perfection and the town appreciate the citizens appreciate it for sure yeah and the ones that don't to heck with them and if, if you have some spare time and want to dig some potholes in front of scott's driveway go ahead and do it <laughs> <laughs> they come up on a nice rainy day see if we can help out <laughs> by the end of scott's driveway <laughs>
All right. We're good. Thanks. Thanks again. Thank you. Uh, let's see. The personnel matter we should push to the end, and we should get rid of some of these um, extra items that we have. So we've got the flood debris, the emergency meeting, or when's a meeting, Scott's question, and then CV fiber yep. for extra items. Yep. Uh, and so on the flood debris, I'd like to address that because I did talk to somebody from the state today. Um, and I did see an email from Rosie that kind of said we weren't responding appropriately or she didn't know what to tell town residents, is what she said in the email. Um, so I got the text from Gina last Friday and um, she said that she had a text from our town rep that said we are supposed to be should be providing a place for household hazardous waste. So that was from Alec Chapin, who was our town rep, or a state rep. So then um, I called the number that was in her text, was Mia at the state office for um, waste management. Talked to her today, and um, she said that we don't have to do anything. Um, the state's not telling us we have to do anything. What we could do if we chose to is call the number that, uh, that Mia gave me a number today. I could call, it's a state number, and they would coordinate getting us a dumpster that we could set up somewhere where people could put some of the stuff or their damaged household stuff or debris or whatever, they could put in that dumpster. But if we do that, then we have to make sure we provide a place for the hazardous waste products, which could be paint and stuff that they had in their cellars, whatever. So it's kind of a twofer. If you do nothing, we don't have to do anything. <laughs> if we do something, we gotta do something, mm. two things. <laughs> um, but FEMA will reimburse us for the cost of the dumpster if we contact the right people in and, the state. And the waste disposal as well? They're gonna deal with the waste disposal, the state will through something. Um, they will collect that. But we have to provide a place. I texted Guthrie the other day, we have a place, we could put it in the Templeton um, fire station, which is empty, our bay in there mm -hmm. is empty. The fire station probably wouldn't be happy with it, but we own the building. So we could just tell them we're going to do this. They will they'll be annoyed, uh, but we can push back. So we could do that. The problem with that is they're going to show up with all kinds of stuff. And, and somebody's have, going to have to pick someone. Them. No, someone has to be there That's what I mean. to reject. We could have a day a week, like one to six on a certain day, and you can bring your hazardous waste right. to here. But somebody has to be there because they're going to show up with dump trucks full of stuff. I guarantee you. And all in black bags. Right. So at the last meeting, didn't we? We were discussing how only a few households were affected in these small. That was the next question: is how many households do we have? I mean, we do all had. I mean, I had two cellars in my houses that were flooded, but we dealt with it. Um, water was coming in faster than we could get it out. But um, I'm sure other homes in town had the same thing. But how many houses actually sustained a lot of damage? The two on Coburn Road and <coughs> two on so, Route 2? Rosie gave me a list of the people that have actually contacted the office. Uh, I think the only one that's home flooded was on Coburn Road. All the rest of these addresses are County Road, Taylor Road, US Route 2. It says basement. Um, US Route 2 could, you know, um, definitely flood. Bliss Road, Coburn Road. Well, Coburn is the flood. Murray, Cummings, Bliss, and Fitch. They have um, so it's basement. Yeah. So the only I know home on here. I mean, any one of us that has driven by Coburn Road can visibly see that we have a home that's at Coburn and Route Two that was destroyed. Um, so, and that person is on that list. Um, but the rest of them are basement floods. Uh, I have two basements for floods. So. Yeah, that's the whatever. so that's one bit of confusion and i have not had time to match this up i reached back out to the state because the only list i had received of people calling 211 which is where you're supposed to call and report your flood yeah. was one person on the list yeah mm -hmm. so i've since gotten three documents from the state that i just didn't have time today to look at the names how if these names are on that list i may ask rosie to help me with that tomorrow to i sent her all that information late today um 
So that that's part of my the, the problem is everyone got a message on our porch forum that said pile your trash out the right. town's going to come pick it up. So mm -hmm. it, it affected all of our I mean Callis put a post on our porch forum on Friday that said we're not coming and picking up your trash. <laughs> the road crews cleaning fixing your roads. Right, right. So you know I think a lot of smaller Rosie got a call from the Middlesex town clerk on Friday. That's what started all of this. Okay. Um, because Middlesex residents, everybody kind of got that same message. So well, can we take it to Middlesex? Hmm? Can we take our stuff to yeah. Middlesex? <laughs> okay, so they're apparently not doing anything. So here's, here's some additional information. <laughs> I talked to Mark Bosma, <laughs> yeah, uh, who is the person who put that post on front porch for him oh, uh, okay. in Vermont Emergency Management, and uh, he said that uh, an additional option for us is to have, if I understood him correctly, to have people put their stuff out and we could contract to somebody, if we could find somebody now to do it, to yep. go around and, and pick yep. it up. So we wouldn't have to manage it ourselves. But um, yeah, I mean, we may not, we may want to go with the original decision from last week to just not do anything as a town because we have so few houses that were affected. And if a house was destroyed, uh, then they're going to be eligible for some FEMA funding to, to repair it, I assume. Well, the problem with the FEMA stuff is after you spent the money, mm -hmm. you get reimbursed. Mm -hmm. That's the problem with FEMA funds. A lot of people don't have the money. But I mean, that's just a comment I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Is everyone says, oh, FEMA. Well, you know, first you got to spend the hundred, two hundred thousand dollars to get the money back. They may not want to build, to rebuild in the same place it's, either. Yeah. So it's anyway. I think the issue if we put a dumpster here and. Is it just gonna be East Montpelier residents, or are you gonna just all of a sudden they'll be right? They're not callous is not doing it. Sounds like a bad idea. Like, I think it's a bad idea. It sounds like so. mayhem. I mean, how are you yeah. gonna? You well, you have to monitor it, and people just gonna say, "Oh, I'm gonna bring my garbage." Right. You know, right. And, and, it got wet. I'm putting it in there. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> it's around. It's <laughs> around <laughs> town. If it's only yes, one dumpster, it could easily, you know, in fill an up. Hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. And the hazardous waste thing is a nightmare. It's like it's a nightmare in Montpelier right now. I know because everything's hazardous waste. Because everybody put everything in black bags, and now they're saying right. to like Central Moss all the waste. Hey, can you guys come down and check through all those bags? Yeah, I, know. <coughs> I don't know much, but I know about garbage, and I know that no one puts in garbage what they say they do. I just I used to work as a I used to work sorting through garbage, and <laughs> I know what's in there, and it's. I think you don't want people street. showing up. If you know what's in there, that's a good thing. We can hire you. <laughs> you know what's in there. You've done that before? <laughs> yeah. Mr. Chair. Well, she knows what's in there, she says. Mr. Chair, you I don't want to. I, think, I, think I do too. Any, but I just want to. Right. So I think that um, I can put something on front porch form that says we are not picking up draft, and unfortunately, we don't have the resources or something. Right. Um, I, we emailed that I received a call. Well, Rosie transferred a call to me today from someone from the state, and they said that the word he used was a ticket had been opened yes. about de debris removal for your town. And I was like, I don't know what you mean. I told him, I said, I know that our um, emergency management EMD um, management director had contacted the state. I said, so perhaps that's what opened the ticket. I said, I'm not sure how we had a ticket open. And he, he said to me, well, tickets are getting opened if towns can't handle picking up the debris on their own, if their road crew can't go handle that. I oh. must admit, I chuckled a little bit because I'm like, I don't think any of the small towns around here have available road crew to go around right. and pick up no. trash right now. In general, right. at least to the best of my knowledge, at least I can say that for Middlesex and, and Callis. Yeah. Um, and I said, we would be in the same boat. So yeah. I just told, so I gave him your number because I yeah. said, I don't know if that's what, all I could guess was that's what prompted that phone yeah. call today. But I'm not sure. I didn't say what. one way or the other to Mia that I talked to. I just said, well, thank you for responding. And I'm, now that you clarified the fact that we don't have to do this. And then she gave me the number to call if we decided to do this. So I'm like, okay, thank you. So. I think we're, I think we're okay with doing nothing. I mean, I hate to say nothing because it sounds bad, but on the other hand, we're not taking action. Exactly. Very good. That's a good way to put it. So I think we're okay. Um, now Rosie sent a long email that I got. Well, now that we have an answer that solves that, okay, I think good. we the calls started coming in at the second. Basically, the everyone morning. got here on Friday okay. morning. <laughs> okay. So. So. We're okay. And yes. people okay. know about um, the Barry backdrop now too, right? I think yeah, she's yeah, she's given all that information. Yeah. Okay. So should we put something on front porch one? 
Okay. You want me to do it? I think it would be nice if the select board chair does that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No action taken. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Um, so that takes care of the flood debris. What it, and now your question about the meeting? Yeah, we had we had this emergency quick meeting, um, and I know Carl wanted to have a meet in person. It just seemed that the email was well spelled out, um, and any questions could have been answered. It, it just it's, we're we're in like a crisis stage, and you had to take an hour of your time. Got through, had to come in. I was just curious on why we had to have that meeting. And, and at what level? Because it, it seemed to be a no-brainer to me. Um, I just thought it was an emergency and we should just do it. That was what I said. Right. But that yeah. wasn't what everyone else said. I guess you didn't. So. Yeah, so, so I could... I think an emergency... Yeah, yeah just be like that, because I'm, I'm new to this whole process. And, yeah. And so the, the select board members do not have any individual power. Uh, we have delegated some power to our, emergency, to our chair in emergencies to right. spend some money, uh, but in terms of making decisions for the town, then it's only the select board as a whole that can make that, that the, so a quorum of the select board, so it needs to be three people. It doesn't have to be in person, it can be our, you know, our online uh, presence, that's, that's perfectly But see, I fine. thought it was an emergency. That's how my take on it. And it could have been. Well, it was a it was a hiring decision. That's where the, on an emergency that's where basis. That's where for me. That's why yeah. I thought a meeting needed to occur was because yeah. it was a hire. But it couldn't have been done in email. It had to be done in email. But wasn't it? Email it's it's no meetings can happen by email. No. You have to be properly warned. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But, okay. Well, it doesn't have to be proper. I mean, properly warning in an emergency can mean calling up the select board members and saying we're writing. Yeah, but I mean, sending out an email and asking people to make decisions on no, you can't. No, do that, that can't. Okay, that's that's, that's yeah. what I'm asking. Yeah, I'm asking for clarification because yeah. there's no opportunity for anybody else to be involved in those email decisions. And I agree with Carl that because it was for a hire, I okay. think that. The select board Great. to make that decision in the forum. We're, we're learning here. <laughs> okay, so Thanks. that takes care of that. Now the CV fiber thing. Yeah, so I got an email from Glenn Moore. He was asking um, about a seemingly sudden realization that the cost for people connecting to CV fiber has gone up. Um, that. Um, uh, for example, yeah. I thought I would have either a 70 foot or at the most a 400 foot drop. Now if my measurements are correct, it would be 900 feet plus or minus that I would have to pay to connect. That'd be $500. Uh, some on the system may be looking at a thousand or $2,000 to connect. And, uh, and then in a follow up he sent during our meeting, he said there's information meeting tomorrow at Maple Corners and he's going to ask about, you know, we had contributed 100000 to CV Fiber and my understanding was we said we want you to use this money to make the connection fee lower for East Montpelier residents. Um, so he, he was going to ask about that. Did, but did I was say, just... Didn't they, didn't they say in that meeting though that they couldn't, that that money would be spread across everybody in the area, that they could not identify Target. Target. They couldn't target East Montclair. I'm pretty sure. No, no, it was East Montclair. Okay. Oh, no, it's East Montclair. Okay. Kind of that was East Montclair, I thought. That's what I thought. And we were yeah. trying to target the drops. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we now, now the thing is, though, was it up to so many, so many dollars per drop? I think we may have sixteen hundred. I think. Yeah. So I just wanted. To, I, I can look into our history on this yeah. and, and more, but I just wanted to check in to see if anybody else had heard anything more I, about I this. I think there was a limit. On, I think there was an average cost per drop. Mm. But I'll, I'll check into our language. No, that would be yeah. good because okay. I don't think we're paying the whole thing, mm. or we're not subsidizing. The right. Thing. Right. Yeah. Five hundred bucks doesn't sound that bad to tell you the truth. That's why nine hundred feet. feet. Mm -hmm. It normally goes in conduit. It's underground. That's what. That's what I thought. <laughs> That's what I think too. Even yeah. if you can get them to do it. Yeah. Okay. So. Thank you. My curiosity is satisfied. I'll follow up with it. Well, no, I, I'm curious to know what happens at the end of the day. Right. How our money is being spent. On, yeah. yeah. On how that's being spent, how it's being divided up yeah. or drop. Yeah. And so. Good question. Okay. Are, are okay. we still working on getting it more to the access to more residents? Like, yeah, well, yeah. See, it's supposed to service the disadvantaged residents initially, uh -huh. and then work back from there. Uh, service those who don't have broadband. Yeah, but they said it 
How did it word that? We'll, we'll look at it word. I think yeah, it's, it's, it's really people that have low speed. That's not necessarily on income level. No, I know, no, 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 no. Yeah. But they had a word for that. Yeah, they did. It wasn't underserved. Underserved. Yeah. Yeah. Underserved. Yeah. 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 underserved. And Horn of the Moon is one place, as if I recall correctly, is underserved. Well, they can't get there now, so it works. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's right. Okay, um, so that takes care of the extra stuff. We've got warrants, town administrative report, and we've got the personnel matter. So, want to do the warrants or? Sure. Warrants. That was something shockingly, glaringly questionable. Mm. That warrant set that you have is to cut a check out of MT to just essentially move kind of all the money. I mean, a little bit's left. So and then there's a couple of events, right? North Country or whatever, eventually. Well, those are, yeah, eventually. <coughs> Thank you. Pretty short and sweet. There have been two zoning permits issued since the last meeting and then the yep. upcoming schedule for the select board meetings. Yep. That's pretty short and sweet. Everybody remember the uh, August 10th fire yes, department meeting? Yeah. Yep. That could be a juicy one? No, it's just a, 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 it could be. a few times a year. Okay. It could be juicy stuff. Seth tries to make it juicy, but it yeah. could be like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it could be I'm, juicy, I'm could. compiling a list of questions for us. Uh, this will be the first time if Callis sends somebody. This will be the first time that. Oh, you we'll think they will send somebody? The, the new member of the board. Where it's at. Yeah. So, they might be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Who knows? I have a bond. I've won a whole bunch of times. <laughs> Four times that I want to. <laughs> so I think it's very important. Yeah. I don't know. I'm carrying that in. Oh, you've never been to that. Thank you, Ruben. Thank you, Ruben. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you coming in. Start talking about personnel. 
Yeah. yeah. You, you live in town? Yes. You ought to be on the select board someday. <laughs> right back of his uh... so we're done except for the executive session personnel mm -hmm. so well, if we could go home the interns are going to be able to get out of here no, yeah I'll make my bedtime and everything well, <laughs> yeah. and then we can tell you what time we enter in, in the banking house yep I'll look forward to it. <laughs> don't, you don't have to stay up for it. Uh, she's just going to go back and watch it on TV. No, he can't because it's going to no, be off. See She'll watch the ending. That's where, you guys where I say, motion to adjourn. Oh, was that what you were doing tonight? Make your contribution. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> OK, so um, I guess we need to make a motion to go in the executive session. Carl does so well. <laughs> for a personnel matter. I move to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing a personnel matter. Under 1 PSA 31383. Yeah. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And 910.